you won't be able to see yeah. them. Well, so that's what, what do you want to set up? Oh, huh? What do you want to set up? Oh, just to, you know, some art. Is there a reason that we can't have them just... Well, okay, so I have no idea if it's going to fall down on poles, somebody or anything like that. What are the poles for? Is it like pictures hmm? or what kind yeah. of art? Oh, it's, just, it's so, a large painted so, piece. Yeah. Okay, so, right, so that's part of, like, so our designated... So I thought you were going to pour the main thing. Make their speeches or spark uh, on it. Well, if you want me to move out. out. So I can move out. <laughs> you're, 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 you're I, I, I don't want to up for that. You know, not a lot of... I mean, that's, that's where it's dead. Well, I don't think that there's any disruption. Well, nobody can see it. Yeah. Yeah. I like to set it up. Yeah. And, and I think I'm saying right. wrong. Okay. Uh, and I, I got to keep my friend. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, is, do you feel it's disrespectful to you? Said, no, I'm just saying. Who do you think? Yeah, we have an area that's so they're good. Yeah. I asked my father. So yeah, they're good. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. And the boss is great. Aloha. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, uh, if you, I, I, if you guys you want to, point out, I can always, you know, you know, we'll figure it out. You know, when you say that it's oh, disrespectful we for us, I know, I know. Display work that was done by hand, hand that was that was done, that was that was done by cultural practice. Wait, let that. Some of our time is wasted. And you're here as a contractor, right? No, I'm for the for the for the army. Who are requesting from the state of Hawaii, who does not own these lands, to occupy illegally these lands for another 65 years, right? The person who oh, disrespect is just a little bit, I don't think it's quite appropriate. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. What I would say is that we are sitting here so that you can make a comment about all the ways. Yes, it doesn't matter. Like, we speech and heading out of teachers, etc. This is the meeting space, and that's the free speech area. Well, who, so, who, who, this is, who has called for that? We, I mean, we I mean, I, the Kupunas are fine with it. We I talked to them. Right, so the colonel said it's good. It's his meeting. For okay, you. Well, if the colonel would like to speak to no, the... No, 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 they're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. No, no, good. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Then, then oh. could, uh, would I, could I ask you to please... Um, retract your statement about disrespect because I am rather offended by it. Okay, I, I, I retract my statement. I, I didn't mean to offend you. I just wanted to... Aloha my Coco. We're gonna get started. Coco, where do you go? Um, we had the community members request to do open with protocol. So we're gonna open with that as soon as they're ready to go. Yeah, so everybody start heading in. No, so, okay, there he is. You ready, brother? Okay.
Hawaii loa, Hawaii poko, Hawaii luna, Hawaii lalo, i hamona o kanalo. Ue halani ne e kahonua, ola kahonua, ola i kahonua. Hola, Kahonua! Oh, Kawailua, okay, Kupuna! Kupa, Kake, Kanaka, Mauliola! Kihea, Mauliola! Eh, oh, my Kaike, my Luna, my I'm facilitating tonight. Um, Aloha, thank you. Um, we're gonna, so tonight is about you folks. So we're here for the Oahu Lease Lands hearing, um, but it really is about getting testimony. So we're gonna have an opening from Colonel McGonagall. Um, and then if you, hopefully you registered when you came in. Um, if you would like to speak, there is a second table that you need to register at. You will be given a number and then you'll be called up in order in which you have a number. 
Um, the goal is to give everybody an opportunity to testify at least once. So it's going to be two minutes. Um, I'm pretty flexible with it. I'm just going to give the plot away. I'm not really uptight about the two minutes. But we want to hear from everyone. Um, so you will be given two minutes. And then at the end of the two minutes, when everybody's pulled a ticket who signed up to speak, I will ask if there's anybody who didn't sign up who would like to speak. And then once we've gone through that group of people, if there is still time, um, people can come up and testify for another two minutes if you would still like to testify. So without further ado, Colonel McConaughey. Yes. Sure. I'm here to hear here, brother. Of course. Aloha and good evening. Uh, mahalo first to the community members for opening the ceremony or opening our meeting here tonight. This is a public meeting, so we're here for you. Uh, I'm Colonel Steve McGonagall, the commander of the U.S. Army Garrison Hawaii, and I'm responsible for the U.S. Army installations that are currently here on Oahu and Hawaii Island. Thank you all for being here tonight and taking time out of your schedule. Tonight's meeting is about hearing your comments on the Army training land retention and state lands at Kahuku Training Area, Kaueloa Poomoho, and Makua Military Reservation Draft Environmental Impact Statement. The document was developed in accordance with the National Environmental Policy Act and the Hawaii Environmental Policy Act, and we are following both NEPA and HEPA processes as we complete this environmental impact statement. The Army currently leases 6,322 acres of state land on Oahu, of which 782 acres are at Makua. These leases expire in August of 2029. The proposed action, the Army's retention of 6,322 acres at Kahuku, Poomoho, and Makua is a real estate transaction that allows the continuation of military activities to include training as well as conservation management of the cultural and natural resources that we have the privilege of caring for and protecting. The Army is not proposing new construction or changes in military training in this draft EIS. As an important step in the multi-year real estate process, the EIS allows us to take a hard look at the environmental impacts of the proposed action. It allows us to be transparent, and most importantly, it gives us the opportunity to hear your comments and recommendations on the proposed action on the EIS. The draft EIS analyzes environmental and socioeconomic impacts of three action alternatives, full retention, modified retention, and minimum retention. The minimum retention alternative applies only to Makua. The Army's preferred alternative is alternative two, modified retention at each training area. At Makua, the Army would retain 572 acres under alternative two. The EIS also analyzes the no action alternative. Under the no action alternative, the current leases would lapse in 2029 and the Army would conduct lease compliance actions as negotiated with the state. Furthermore, the Army would no longer have access to those state lands and training and the Army's cultural and natural resource conservation efforts on those lands would cease after lease expiration. We have posters and members of our ES team, and posters over here on the side, to provide additional information about this EIS. We also have a copy of the draft EIS here. It's back towards the posters, available to review. A hard copy is available for review here at the Waianae Public Library, as well as the Wahiwa. Kahuku and Hawaii State Public Libraries. You can also download a copy of the EIS from our website. As you may have read in the draft EIS or heard during our two briefs to the Board of Land and Natural Resources, land exchange is a potential process to be used during land retention negotiations that would start after the EIS process is completed. Land exchange is not analyzed in the draft EIS. And we are early in the planning stages and lands to be exchanged have not yet been identified any land exchange would be addressed in separate future environmental compliance processes. This meeting is being broadcast live on the U.S. Army Garrison Hawaii's YouTube channel. For those of you who are not able to be here in person tonight, we do have a phone line available tonight through Thursday. You can call 808-515-5518. Again, that's 808-515-5518 and leave your recorded message. For those of you that are here in person, again, we thank you for being here. Once you start, you can come up to the microphone to provide your oral comment, just asking that you sign and register so we have a number, uh, so we can be respectful of all the personnel who want to speak tonight and have their voice heard. 
and you can also submit a written comment on the table uh, back to the left. Our comment period continues until August 7th, where you can mail, email, or submit your comments on our website. The website email and mailing address are located in the flyer that is available by the entrance where you registered and came in tonight. Oral comments provided during this meeting will be transcribed and all comments will be included in the final EIS. Mahalo for your participation tonight. Mahalo everybody. So um, again, we're gonna get started and trying to move through everybody. So that's it for the presentation. So the first testifier, number 81. of Makua Valley has inflicted irreparable harm upon this sacred land. We have witnessed the desecration of our sacred sites, the pollution of our natural resources, and the disruption of our traditional practices. These abusive actions not only degrade the landscape, but also erode <laughs> our spiritual and cultural foundation on which our community thrives on. The military's assertion of control over Makua Valley in exchange for land value is an upfront to our heritage and our right to indigenous people. We the people refuse to accept the proposed land swap for the desecration of our ancestral lands. Allow the Hawaiian people to heal ourselves by healing our Makua. We call upon you to recognize the sovereignty and respect our inherent right to stewardship of our land. We demand the return to its rightful owner heirs and the people, the Hawaiian people. If the Hawaiian people do not have mukua, it is robbing us an opportunity to live and breathe aloha. Heli ka'aina, he kaua, he kanaka. Eo. Courage coming into Waina, you can see some of the community involvement. Uh, so, over 2,000 pages. I don't understand what's written here. So, I would like to suggest and recommend the Army coming up with funding so that we can go out and look for an expert to explain all of those words and the implications and the impact to us so that we're not agreeing to something that turns out to be a lie. Okay, so that's one part. Um, ooh, what's going on here? This thing is taking notes, sorry. I lost my notes. Um, within the EIS, there's three options. We need a fourth option. And the fourth option is no retention clean up of all the land and return it. Now we've talked in the past about returning land and the government, the military has no mechanism to return land. But there was a mechanism to take land. So there must be a mechanism to return. And the idea of clean up means that it needs to be to our standard of clean up so that we can plant food, so that we can live on it, and our children can grow up without risk of contamination, disease, or any type of issue caused by the contamination. So as with Red Hill, drinking jet fuel doesn't really work. And now that the court says 
there's no real connection to the illness and the cause. So we want to make sure that we can prevent some of that. So again, no retention, clean it all up, and return it all to the kingdom. And that includes a complete return of all the lands that the military occupies. And I notice within the military, you have all these different departments. You got Marines, you got Navy, you got National Guard, you got Army, and Navy. I'm not interested in those separations because it confuses the issue. Occupation is occupation. The return is the return. So, um, as an occupying army, you must be enforcing kingdom law and not the law of the occupiers. So how do we make that happen? Um, and finally, clean all occupied land, restore it to pre-use and pre-occupation, um, make it 100% to our standard. So it's not the experts that are PhDs, we need our own access to PhDs to question and do peer review. Thank you. Number 83, please. I'm, I'm talking to the mic. Oh, was that me? Sorry. I'm just talking to the mic. All of us. All of us. Hi, aloha. I'm um, Lina Suzuki with the Wainaimo Kukupuna Council. Um, and I just wanted to, I'm a kapo to Uncle Sparky as well. And one of the things he always tells us or reminds us about the military is that you guys are our neighbors. Um, but you guys are our ohana that is behaving badly. And there's a lot of toys that you guys left in our moku that you guys didn't pick up yet. So there's a lot of kuleana in our moku of Wainai. Uh, one of the things I wanted to just make, make a statement about is please don't come to different mokus and talk about different mokus issues. So you come to Wainai, you talk about Wainai. We're not here to talk about Kahuku or Pakuloa or any other places in this, on this state. We are here specifically to talk about Wainai. And so we would appreciate it that when you guys come, I see on the map there's three different lands you guys want to talk about, but for Wainai, we talk about Wainai. Thank you. Mahalo, Mahalo. Number 84, please. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Aloha, my name is Helene Sonora Pale. I'm with Kalohui Hawaii, a native initiative for self governance and self determination formed in 1987 by Kanaka Maoli leaders on the island of Hawaii. This is a historic moment for our people. For over 131 years, Kanaka Maoli have burnt, borne the brunt of the weight of an illegal military occupation that has alienated us from our aina, poisoned our vai, desecrated our sacred and historical sites and destroyed critical habitats for native and endemic organisms. The US Army's 65-year lease, leases of stolen Hawaiian crown and government lands at Makua, Poamoho, and Kahuku on Oahu need to expire. The Army needs to clean up your opala, and the lands need to be given back to the rightful heirs, the Kanaka Maui people. And that is just the beginning, because eventually we want every square foot back. All 51,000 acres that the Army occupies on Oahu. It is absolutely not in our best interest to allow the Army to renew their leases of 6,322 acres, which is home to dozens of endangered plants, birds, and fish, as well as the location of known and unknown sacred sites and important water features and sources. Let us not forget the U.S. military's armed invasion in 1893 here on Oahu, which led to the loss of political power and the theft of two million acres of Hawaiian lands. Let us not forget the decades of violence and abuse our people have suffered under illegal military occupation. How can we forget 
Joseph Kahahawai, Kimo Mitchell, and George Helm, all victims. How can we forget the now uninhabitable, uninhabitable island of Kaho'olawe, which was used as target practice for decades? How can we forget Red Hill, where 93,000 residents, many of whom were your own servicemen and women, and their children, and drank contaminated water with the army's, contaminated with the army's fuel? And how can we forget Pohakuloa and the bombs still being dropped to this day? These are not the actions of Pono caretakers of this land, Papahanaomoku. And as people of the land, every bomb that is dropped, every chemical released, every burial desecrated, every tree burned, every nest destroyed is an injury to us collectively. And for what? Hawaii is the command center for the U.S. military operations in Oceania. The training that take, takes place in Makua, Kuamoho, and Kahuku is not for our safety and security, but instead is used in the oppression of indigenous peoples across Oceania and around the world to build U.S. empire. If the U.S. Army was concerned for our safety and our security, they would stop poisoning our land and water. Their presence here makes a livable Oahu near impossible. I almost fell. Because like what happened at Red Hill, we are doomed to be the hapless victims of disasters caused by death games they play on our aina and in our moana. And when the water is undrinkable, the fish inedible, and the land is beyond repair, no one will be held accountable. No one will take responsibility. Our children and grandchildren are the beneficiaries of our action and our inaction. The Army admits in their draft EIS that retention of these lands will have adverse effects on land tenure, the environment, water sources, and cultural access and practices in their own, they say it, in their own draft EIS. The mitigation that is proposed to lessen adverse effects is just the Army going through the motions and seeing what it needs to in order to keep control of these lands, our lands. When de dealing with the military, it is important you learn this term. We don't know what we don't know. The US military is allowed to keep secrets from the public, even if it endangers human health in our environment. And they have done this over and over. In the EIS, there are blank spots. We need full disclosure in the draft EIS. We need to know everything. What's on our aina? Is this the future? This is my last one. Is this the future we want for our children and grandchildren? This is a once in 65 year opportunity to voice our opposition to army retention of leases. Do we want our grandchildren doing this in 65 years? No. No. The US military is destroying our island home and the only future worth passing on to the next generation is a demilitarized one. And before you leave, Please submit a written testimony. You can submit as much testimony as you want. There's a testimony table back there. Aloha. 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 Number 85, please. 85. Aloha. 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 I ke kula Hawaii, I ke kula nui o Hawaii, mama no. My grandfather, Sergeant First Class John Zara the Third, served in two wars for the United States. My dad is contracted with the United States military. He does engineering work for them. But um, both my papa and my tutu died early. My papa due to brain cancer and my tutu lung cancer. My baby sister passed away at the age of two years old due to complications. And all of these deaths, I can't say 100%, is due to the effects of growing up right next to somewhere that was consistently bombed. But I cannot help but think. And 
it's bad enough that I lost my grandparents early, that I lost my sister, but do I have to keep thinking about my children and their children? How much longer? And that's all I have to say. Mahalo. Aloha my kako. Aloha. Ova o kiko avela Burgess Tawala, Noah and I my ao. Aloha everyone, my name is Kiko Avela Burgess Tawala. I'm born and raised in Waianae and currently living in Waianae. My family's been here for a couple generations already. Uh, I do not agree with any renewal of the leases in Hawaii. I support Uncle Sparky's idea for an option four where you guys leave and you guys also clean up your mess. There is no need for the army to renew their lease in Makua or any other aina when they have said themselves in 2023 that they no longer need to conduct live fire training. The army does not belong here. Hawaiians belong here. The Waianae community belongs here. Those who were displaced many years ago, their mo'opuna and their ohana deserve to be here. You guys are not going to stay. In the next five years, it is your kuleana, the Army's responsibility to clean Ma'akua. We are, we are not certified in cleaning unexploded ordinances. You guys are. The aina we receive back should be, be in better condition because you guys have all the technicians and all the workers that can do that. You guys want to bomb and play soldier on our aina, you guys better clean up your mess. You guys don't understand that aina is sacred. All aina is sacred. Makua is sacred. Makua in Olelo Hawaii means parent or parents. Makua is our parent, our parents, our kupuna. We are her cake. How could you hurt your own parents? Would you go and hurt your own parents? No, I don't think so. Why would we continue to allow you guys to hurt our, our makua and our kupuna? In makua or wherever, in kahuku, Pohakuloa. It is my hope, my dream, that one day, 60 years from now, I will be with my mo'opuna living and hanging out in Makua, whatever, having fun with them, playing with them, sharing with them the stories of Kamoho Ali'i and the mo'o that lives there, sharing with them the kupuna who have fought to get Makua back for us and for them. But most importantly, being able to be with them over there in Makua without the fear of being harmed. Mahalo. 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 Eighty-seven. Well, she's eighty-seven. Hello. Aloha. My name is Mia Lisa Otis. Makua Military Reservation is home to more than 40 endangered and threatened species. In Kahanahiki Forest, there are canopies of 60-foot tall koa and kukui trees. The endangered and thriving birds of Koamoho, there are 17. Kahuku, there are six. And Makua, there are six, plus 44 plants. And the um, bird species are the ones that I mentioned along with the haha, hapu'u, and mamaki, which the kamehameha butterfly thrives off of. There are still rare kuhuli tree snails singing in the foliage. Then of course, the oahu, elupayo, and other endangered birds that are hanging on by a feather. The valley also contains many sacred sites. For decades, the military used the valley for live fire training, which sometimes led to wildfires that destroyed native forests and desecrated cultural sites. This is not a situation where the term, you broke it, you buy it. It doesn't fit in. You broke it, you fix it, and return it to the rightful owner in better shape. Don't even think of using your leftover unexploded ordinances as an excuse to keep the land. Here you are getting the protocol community consultation of three meetings, three meetings in three days for decades of damages, just to check boxes that measly two-hour meeting met whatever requirements you have. Some of you might be hearing wah 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 wah, but please take us seriously. 
I hope all these testimonies aren't falling on deaf ears. Speaking of which, what have you done to include those who don't speak English, like Chinese, Filipino, like the federal ADA law requires? Where would indigenous people be able to see this in their native language? And where can I get a copy of the entire EIS in Olelo, Hawaii, not just a summary? And I close, on behalf of the Linio descendants and Ibi Kapuna, we are putting the U.S. Army on notice. Mahalo. Mahalo. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Makanoe Mufana. I am a descendant of Frances Bersosa de Peralta. She is a native here of Makaha. And my family are the caretakers for the heiau at the bottom of Makua Valley. We grew the kiave trees that protect it from bad intentions. Um, the military activities has scarred our lands with bombs and artillery, polluting our air, water, and soil. The never-ending roar of aircrafts and the presence of great ships disturb the peace of our oceans and our skies, causing harm to our marine life and native birds, even driving them to beach themselves in distress from the noise which you have been aware of since the complaint against the Navy RIMPAC exercise in 2006. With a large beaching marine life during RIMPAC exercises and also injuries from vessels to marine life resulting in death. This relentless assault on our environment is not just a violation of our physical space, but an upfront to our cultural and spiritual connection to these lands. Moreover, the military presence in Hawaii reflects the broader pattern of historical colonialism, neglecting to the, the awareness of this, their history and their crimes against the UN and the native, uh, their national, the nation of Hawaii. In these waters and sands, you disregard our indigenous rights. The history of Hawaii is marked by the illegal overthrow of our sovereign government and the illegal occupation of our lands through military and the men that were here from the United States who misused the United States military because some man-child cried wolf. The continuation of military leases and activities perpetuates this historical injustice and undermines our efforts towards self-determination. In a time when our islands face unprecedented challenges of climate change and environmental degradation, the military's destructive footstep only con makes us aware of these threats and calls for concern. The limited resources on our island must be safeguarded for future generations. And I think the military doesn't realize this because they have a very large amount of land in the US where you can't see your resources, but we can see ours, and they're disappearing. Therefore, I implore you to consider the pro profound implications of renewing these military leases and allowing the continued presence of the United States military on our sacred lands. Their presence is not only unnecessary, but also detrimental to our collective well-being, cultural integration, and also our environmental sustainability. We demand respect for our sovereignty, our culture, and our land, and our natural heritage. It is time to prioritize the voices of Na'uwibi and for you to listen to us, because we were the stewards first. So we should know how to take care of our land and bombing it is not the correct answer. Therefore, I urge you to reject the renewal of military leases on Oahu, as well as all of your leases on all of our beloved land. Mahalo. And just in case your ears don't work, I have it written for you. Mahalo. Thank you. Okay, 
Okay, number 89. Number 89. No, because you have to be signed in there. So if you want, can pull your team. We have a lot. We are a lot. We can teach the military. We can teach the world so much if you would listen. Our land means life. Our seeds mean life. We can teach people wars do not mean life. Wars are bottom of this. That's the last thing you want. Preparation for war is right above the bottom of that list. We have much to offer. Your military people, they come here, they love it. Tourists come here, they love it. Other islanders come here, they love it. Foreigners come here, they love it. Because in Aloha, we can give. We don't have to destroy. And that's what we're trying to save and keep for generations to come. We can't do this if we destroy what we have, what we've had now. Your military people, come here, they go away different because they felt the aloha in this aina. Ask any of them. They do feel it. What these people feel now, we can offer this. No destruction. We can offer you aloha. We can show you love in Hawaii that fills our people, it fills our aina, we can share this, and we'd love to. Mahalo. Mahalo. Mr. Ming, how do you say your name? Sorry, I don't want to. Steve. Okay, Mr. Steve. <laughs> My name is Nani. I'm a kupu of this aina, of this oh. moku of Hawaii and I specifically. I'm a kiai. I will live, I live here and I will die here. <clears throat> the state of Hawaii does not own anything in our islands. Therefore, you are asking the wrong people. They don't own especially our lands. We don't even own our lands. Mr. Steve, we, including you, and all you work for, are supposed to be stewards to these lands. This EIS document, all documents written by the United States of America that is present here, <clears throat> produced, issued, and signed, are null and void yes. and do not apply to the Kingdom of Hawaii that continues to exist under international, international and national laws, under signed treaties, the supreme law of the lands, in which your United States of America government has agreed to. <clears throat> Your document as I read, and I only got up to maybe 100 at the most. It was ridiculous. The words were very misleading. Yeah. And it always ended up leading back to the military not doing anything but what is fit for the military. And nothing for the Aina, nothing for the people of this Aina. So I would say, again, null and void. Your illegal 65 year lease from 1964 should end now. Whoa. Your mission requirements and planning you must do, plan to fund the Kingdom of Hawaii forever. For all the wrongs the military has done to our spaces, our places, our people. For we, of and from Hawaii, will have to clean up your mess. 
forever. Because your track record shows you won't. Plan to train our kanaka of and from Hawaii that is serving you at this moment to know how to operate all your military equipment for when you migrate back to where you came from. Over the past six decades, these 51,000 acres of stolen army training areas and lands has only brought upon displacement, disconnection, destruction, desecration, drugs. Yes, you are a part of drugs, this drug epidemic issue here, and death, and more in between. Your answers to your proposal to retain any lands across Hawaii is no, no, no. Kako, I want, I want to read this to you <clears throat> real quick because I kind of wanted to see really what the Army's mission is, yeah? And so just let this resonate with you right now, yeah? See how much aloha the military really has, yeah? Our purpose remains constant. This will defend <clears throat> has been our Army's model since the Revolutionary War. It reminds us, sorry, hold on. I'm, this is my last one. Uh, it reminds us that our purpose is timeless and clear to fight and win our nation's wars. Their nation, not ours. When our army hits the dirt, America means business. Our teammates don't want to fight without us. And our enemies are wise to fear us. I doubt that. We're not fearful of you. We are not a Pacific Army or a Europe Army. They're not even for us, Kako. We are not a brigade-centric or division-centric. We are a global force that fights when called upon at the scale required. To do that, we must stay grounded and dedicate our energy in four focus areas. War fighting, delivering ready combat formation, continuous transformation, and strengthening the profession. Does that sound like aloha to you? Does that sound like they care about our aina to you? Does that sound like they care about us to you? You're on notice, sir. I'm a descendant of these Ainas and a kiai of these Ainas. And unless you get the consent from us, the people of this place, you are not moving forward with any Aina. as Uncle Sparky and Auntie Nani. You guys are right on. Sorry I wrote this uh, as I was coming here. So I, Anyway, my name is Auntie Z. Ziona Naho'o Ikaiko Holo Holo Kula. I am an Army brat. My father was a retired sergeant major. My mother was Hawaiian. Many of the military raped our women over here, just to let you know and remind you of what you guys do over here. Okay? I would say that first. Tilao, exactly, exactly. Everybody heard that one. Okay, anyway, my dad was with the 264 Army Band, Royal Hawaiian Band, and the Honolulu Philharmonic Symphony. We were lied to all my life, 75 years worth. The military today has done more than $2 trillion worth of U.S. damage in Hawaii to our drinking water, our land damage with live ordinances still left behind. That needs to be cleaned up and uh, cleaned up. Ocean water damage with whales and fishes dying because the explosions so that they can do their war games in Pacific, which they are doing today. They were not even ready to deploy when they were desperately needed in Lahaina. What the fuck are you guys? Sorry. 
That's all Pilau you guys got. You proved to be Pilau. Good for nothing. Building golf courses, expensive homes for generals, while our native kids and our native Hawaiians are still homeless, living in cars while going and attending schools in Hawaii. Selling lands that are not yours to sell to foreigners. You have proven to be untrustworthy. And killing your own military families in Hawaii at Red Hill. So shameful. You guys are so shameful. So end your military leases because you do not deserve to be here at all. Aloha. Hello, hello. hello. I, my name is uh, John DeSoto. I'm a retarded, I'm a retired council member. <laughs> but and um, most of you know I get chicken skin because my mom was Frenchy DeSoto, the creator of the Office of Wine Affairs. She was the one that went down to Makua and showed us as we were kids. She would go down to Makua and lie down in front of the bulldozers, the army tanks, and stuff like that to protest all the things that were happening up in the valley of Malka from the, the highway. But I get chicken skin. I heard everybody that came up before me that spoke. And I get really chicken skin because it means a lot. You know, and the things that I've done all my life, you know, I've gone all over the world. I used to live in different countries, Czechoslovakia, I lived in Barcelona, racing dirt bikes, of course. But the dirt bikes is the one that gave me the opportunity to see and feel the spirits what's up Malka. Not just in Makua, but of course in, I was talking to Steve up in, in Kahuku, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like really unreal because I took all the Hawaii burial councils. I'm in the Makaha Hawaiian Civic Club. So we get the Civic Club groups together. And what everybody that came up before me and spoke, I can see and I can feel what they're saying. That's true. And what the, the, the dirt bikes have done for me gave me the opportunity to go and see places and do things. And not too many people have the opportunity and privilege of doing and seeing and feeling. When I take the Hawaii Barrel Council, when I take the Hawaii City Clubs, we walk, we meet up to Kohoku with the ride dirt bikes up there. Mm -hmm. I show them the villages that the military had on, 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 in Hawaiian language that nobody knew about. So I would take them up there and sure enough, there were families that used to have people that used to live there in the areas. And I always would go to say, all of to go to the kapunas, my my come, you guys go to the, the where the village, all the grass is growing. And they'll look at me and they'll shake their head. I go, why? Because 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 Mr. De Soto, you're the one that come here all the time. You come and you go. You're not staying over here going Mahaoi like the military does. And I said, I right, okay. You know, so when they see me coming and the spirits know that I'm coming and I'm going. So that's what they felt. But, you know, with the Hawaiian Civic Club, I see I'm talking like a chicken skin because everybody that came up before me, I can feel what they're saying and what it is. And the whole thing is, as I told at one time the military in uh, Haleiwa, up Malka side, there's an old Japanese airplane that crashed during World War II. They, they didn't know that. It was up in there. And when I ride the dirt bikes, I get to see all different areas. I got to see the archaeological sites. And not too many people have the opportunity and privilege of doing it, of experiencing. So when I told the state and I told the military about the, the Japanese airplane, they didn't know about it. But finally they did. And you know, it was like, I didn't want to take anybody else up there, but I didn't want to see bones of people that was in the airplane and the crash and stuff like that. But, but what I really appreciate, I wasn't thinking about coming up and speaking, but all those who came up before me, and those out there that feel, we know what we've gone through, and we've been there, done that. And I've gone to Kaumalabi a lot, with the Hawaiian uh, uh, Civic Clubs, and yeah, it's the, the Pico. It's almost like the Pico of the Hawaiian Islands inside there, so we gotta make sure that everybody work together. 
it's got to be a win-win situation. Mahalo. Mahalo. Number 93. Aloha, Kelsey, Kule, Makamai, Kailos, Kili, Ikipi, Koino, Piha, and Owe, and I'm I'd like to start by thanking you guys for your service to your great country. The empire that has been illegally occupying my country. This is not America, and it will never be. Let me remind you, sir, that the Hawaiian Kingdom was recognized as a sovereign state by America through a peace treaty in 1849, which was ratified by the U.S. President in 1850. In 1893, you guys overthrew our, mar our monarchy using militant forces, and in 1898, you illegally annexed the Hawaiian Kingdom through a joint resolution without the consent of the Hawaiian government. <laughs> For the past 131 years, you have been illegally occupying the Hawaiian Kingdom in violation of international law, committing the war crime of usurpation of sovereignty. Your presence here has denationalized and displaced my people. A big example of this would be the homeless encampment not too far from here called Pu'uhunua Wai'anai. Let me remind you that the only legal treaty that has allowed your presence here is the Treaty of Reciprocity in which we allowed you Pu'uloa, or as you may know it, Pearl Harbor. In return, you used your militant arms and your imperialistic beliefs upon the indigenous people of this land, Kanakamoli and Hawaiian Kingdom Nationals, to continue a belligerent occupation of my country. All your claims to these lands are illegal, and you know it, and you should. And mark my words, you will be held accountable. Your American Constitution does not even mention the word environment anywhere in it. NEPA regulations were only made in the 1960s or 70s. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not American. <laughs> you claim you need Makua in the name of national defense for wars that you started. You claim to know Aloha Aina, but all you know is desecration and genocide. No. I revoke my U.S. citizenship because where will you deport me when you are the one who do not belong here? Let the record show that I cannot wait until America is held accountable for all the war crimes and human rights violations inflicted upon my people and country, the Hawaiian Kingdom. He Hawaii ao mau a mau, e ola mau ke ao puni Hawaii e o. Oh, Susan Gorman Chang Ko Inua, no Eva Beach My Ao. Military leases are a classic example of what Western culture has done to attempt to sever the connection of Kanaka Maui to the Aina and serves to harm us all. The Aina has been bombed, shelled, and was used for live fire training, which was only discontinued when the army was forced to do so because of a lawsuit. Military is not required to clean up until leases expire. Allowing new leases and thus retention of these lands by the military will exacerbate intergenerational trauma and further alienate Kanaka Maui from these Aina. I have some specific um, requests about the EIS. First, I'd like to request more time to review this EIS. It's 2,798 pages long, and we deserve a more reasonable time than just two months. So I'm asking for an additional two months um, until October 7th. 2024 to submit written testimony. Um, second, I'm requesting a complete title search and complete title reports for each of the parcels of the land the Army includes in the EIS. I don't see um, how you can have clear title of the state to lease to the Army uh, of stolen ceded lands. They're gonna like a map in total acreage of all the Hawaiian islands showing where the Army has control of the land for training of any kind, whether state or federal. This way we can look at the whole picture of the military's training capabilities and footprint on the islands. Fourth, I'd like a map of the total acreage of the entire continent, continental United States as well as Guam, American Samoa, Mariana Islands, and Puerto Rico, where the Army also has training areas of any kind. In the executive summary on the EIS, page 3.13, please add the word illegal so that it reads in 1893 when the Hawaiian Kingdom was illegally overthrown. The term illegally overthrown was used by President Cleveland in his address to Congress in which he stated, quote, the Kingdom of Hawaii was unlawfully invaded by the United States Marines on January 16, 1893, which led to an illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian government the following day. Uh, next in the EIS, very quickly, um, it says the Army spends 
1.5 million on cultural resource management and 5.6 million on natural resource management on Oahu. I'm requesting a detailed dollar breakdown and description of exactly how these funds were spent. And um, uh, lastly, allows, allowing these leases to expire to require the military to clean up the unexploded ordinances, munitions, and all their pollution on this Aina and to restore the land to a healthy condition is an important step in healing. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Number 95, please. Hello, my kako. Aloha. Um, please forgive me if I go over a little. That's not my intention to take away from anybody else. Um, but I come to, as a culture practitioner, in American language, they say necromancy. Um, kahuna ana ana. I just wanted to share that um, I come with the support and kako'o of the families of Makua Valley. Their names are. Yes, girl. <coughs> Kahiana, Land Commission Award 5667 upon a one. Kahiana, 5667 upon a two. Kalauli, 5556 upon a one. Kalauli, 5556 upon a two. Kalua, 6134 upon a one. Kalua, upon a two. Kamaka, Kanai, Kanai, two and five. Mo'o, one and two, Land Commission Award, 6092. I have brought my kupuna here to bring the truth to this circle, to this building, to this issue. My aumakua kamoho ali'i, my kupuna kamoho ali'i. The aqua kane lonoku kanaloa and tutupele. My kaulas, ki'i'i ali'i ua aqua lele, ahi au and po'okela. I am kahakua koi. I am a lineal descendant of the last chief of White and I. His name is Heulu. As many may be here as the same family as well. I come from the house of Mahi, the house of Keave, house of Moana. Ulu Hema I e is my Ohana. I am of the CEO of Kekuana Oa Foundation, a member of the House of Heirs, whose goal works to educate and protect the interests of Kanaka Maoli, Ali'i, Konohiki, and Crown Lands. I would like to remind the occupier as we are all aware we're in occupation. I'm pretty sure 99% of us are aware we're in occupation. Thus, that means FM 27-10, laws of war dictate our occupation. Which means, as Uncle, Par Uncle Sparky had stated, the laws in Hawaii is the kingdom of Hawaii. This is a violation of international war crimes. Your US Inc. and your USA, de jure and both de facto, are in occupation and through the Queen's letter as an armistice stated conditions to the de jure that it is your job to protect the interests of Kanaka Maoli. Your executive order which forcibly removed Kanaka Maoli from their ancestral lands is the violation of the Treaty of 1859, the Treaty of Friendship, Commerce and Navigation between the Hawaiian Kingdom and the de jure USA. This means for those who don't understand all Kanaka Maoli rights are acts of genocide upon our soil by the occupier. Because every law upon our soil should be the kingdom. And I say this because I teach this to Kanaka Maunis. These rights are being violated. Who holds you accountable for the 131 years of occupation? This is being heard and petitioned to the heavenly courts of EO. My testimony is held and heard in the heavenly courts, which means all of those who I have stated has heard this petition. And I release this petition for justice to be handed to the desecrators of the sacred kupuna, Papahanaumoku, the waters of Kane, the waters of Kanaloa, Lono, Artutupele, Laka for her forests, Ilokoka Yesu Christo, Ah Mama Wanoa. Mahalo.
our permission, right, Ines? Um, there's a notice of declaration going around. Right now I have 10 in my hand that do not support the renewing of Makua Valley. If you haven't gotten one, see me or see Nani. These are signed with witnesses. It's a notice to the military, Mr. Steve. Aloha. Um, I was over there wondering um, why they sent you and how what you did, bruh, like if you volunteered to sit here in front of us, but um, you know, a story for your grands that you, you did. Um, I'm also a lineal descendant. I'm Haumana. Uh, my name is Inez. I'm a um, long-term re long resident of uh, Wainai. I'm a resident of Oahu. Um, I am a Hawaiian Studies major, hold a bachelor's degree in Hawaiian Studies, and what you're looking at is exhaustion after studying for six years. And I have so many stories at 47 years old of Wainai. You know, we are the people of the sharks, we are related to the sharks, and I know all of my stories of my night marchers, and from the tutu, from Honokai Hale, and Wainai, and all of these mo'olelo, these stories. And then I go to college, and I have them reinforced and confirmed that I'm, I'm just a collector of stories. Made it into Makua, and, and saw the beauty of Makua. You know, and, and what, I, what I am so exhausted from is not having my answers. So I'll go to my, my professors at Hawaii New Akea and say, so the military did this. They're occupying Makua to keep us from Kukani Loko, from the birthing stones, and they don't want us to go into Wahiwa and be able to walk over the mountain to reach our sacred areas because these are chiefly places that the Konohiki need us to access, you know, and, and there's no answer. When will you guys tell us, yes, that's right, we did this to you? Yes, we're sorry. We did block your way. And we're gonna sit here and ho'oponopono and make things right because I am ready for a peace treaty with you guys. I'm ready to sit and be friends. I'm sorry that you have to sit there and take all that mana tonight and hopefully you walk away with something good, the love that we have for the Aina and we have for each other. We know we're under occupation and under armed conflict and we just, I just stand against you know, the renewing of naturally of army leases. I was taught in college that the military occupied Hawaii in order to protect the West Coast they will never let it go. But I just want you to know that that is not true. I am being pushed out of the University of Hawaii New Kea like a machine, and there are, there's an army behind me coming out of immersion schools. Those young Hawaiians are coming up, and the day will come, maybe not while I'm alive. I think I've already accepted that I will probably be dead, but my grandchildren will see Hawaii free. Oh, yeah, no. oh. Mahalo. Oh. Mahalo. Oh. Mahalo. Oh. Mahalo. Okay, okay. Nice to see you. Aloha. 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 I don't have a written statement. I'm not Hawaiian. I don't have Hawaiian lineage. My three kids are part Hawaiian. With my wife of 42 years. As you can see, the former military. I give you credit for sitting up here in front of the firing squad. It must be hard to do all by yourself. <coughs> well, you're not, you're not military either, but yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> but I trained at Pohoko. I trained in Kohoko I have trained in Maku. And at that time when I was training, we just follow orders. Just like you do, you follow orders from your higher ups. And I appreciate that. But, Makoa Valley, that's the only one I'm gonna speak of so far for tonight. Makoa Valley should be given back to the people. Should be given back to the Leeward Coast. I'm a retired truck driver, 42 years over here. And I've been up at the back of Makoa Valley with my semi, delivering material up there. And the military personnel that went, met me up there told me, stay on track, you go off track, there's unexploded evidences up there. Now, I know 
what a thousand pounder can do. I know what a 500 pounder can do. I know, I don't know if they still use them, I know what a 250 pounder can do. When they hit the ground, they don't explode, they make a big crater regardless. And eventually, the land covers it. The whole lot of they said, it's clean. No, it's not. There's a lot of ordinances that are buried. Just like Makua, there's a lot of ordinances in that valley which are buried after all the years of being used as a training. Now, and I know it's not, now it's not your decision, but I know your heart helps. But that valley has to go back to the Leeward Coast. Thank you. Keep it to two minutes. Okay, I'm going to kindly ask that you folks try to keep it to two minutes, please. Please. Sorry, go ahead. Color my cow. Don't try. Try, you just try your best. That's all I ask. Color my love way, I gotta face my cool back to everybody over here. You can spin them around if you like. No, but I like, you like, I like okay. talk to Steve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, brother. But the only way you guys want, we're gonna take you guys serious. Get the generals over here. Get the generals over here, because what, what rank you, brother? Your colonel. Right. We deal with colonels, you guys psych one out every four years. Bring the generals here. And before I, my name is Kapu Oho Wahilani. Hey, why not? Ao Mau. Ao Mau. Lifelong resident over here. Before I say anything, I'm in total opposition of any extension. And like what Uncle Spocky said, you guys never leave that fourth option, which was to get out. Why we gotta wait? Now, boy, oh, why not? I'm out of 65 years. First of all, like Mahalo Nui Law, too to Malama Makua, the boat Malama Makua organizations that we worked hard that this is 21 years stop firing, life firing in Makua. So mahalo nui loa for that. I also want to say, raise your hand if you're over here in opposition. Somebody take a picture. Somebody take a picture. Steve, take this, you, you got a phone Steve, take this picture and send them back to the general. Who's over here in opposition? Raise your hand. Thank you, Steve. And the difference, yeah, we, we also got to address the guys that freaking bankrolling the United States military complex. Like Sister said earlier, January 16, 1893, the USS Boston was at Pool Law. Then they head to Honolulu Harbor, January 17, 1892. I'm gonna talk about the elephant in the room. You guys already know, because you guys, the military got, got enough information by Dr. Keanu Sai, who's, 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 who went before the army some years back. So you guys know about the illegal occupation, right? Everybody know. There's no treaty of annexation, it failed twice. Joint resolution is only on the meets and bounds of the United States of America. We're 2,500 miles away. You guys came like on bad cancer, you never left. And we, Steve, me, as well as every Kanako Ivi over here, and as well as every, every Hawaiian citizen and Nomokoko that love Hawaii, We are here to let you know, as I'm saying from our brothers and sisters, our Native Americans, respect our existence or expect our existence. So I want you to go back and take it, take it back to the generals. And I was kind of appalled coming over. You guys have set me off already. Come over here. I see barriers already. Like, who does that? 
It's our aina, we just start. I mean, yeah, we get barriers of the oh, no, the military, they'll be here. But Steve, look under the Treaty of Annexation. That's, that's the one, that's the one key. There's no Treaty of Annexation. What is the Treaty of Annexation? Okay, how you know, right? That's some binding legal freaking contract between two countries. It failed. It oh. failed twice. The first time President Grover Cleveland would stop him. And he sent James Blunt to come over here to investigate. And he found that it was illegal. Why? Because in November 20, 1843, our country, the Hawaiian Kingdom, was recognized. It was called the Franklo, Franklo American, Franklo, Franklo Saxon. Okay, what? Anglo Franco Proclamation. Yeah, that Queen Victoria of England and King Louis Philippe of France signed. We was the first non-European country recognized internationally. The first country of color. So, come back with the fourth option. Put all the first three options on the side and just, just get out of here. Yeah, I mean, you know, we can talk as humans. But you, you're not from here, brother. The difference between us is Kanako Ibi and you guys. The Aina is our kupuna. We love the Aina. So, with that being said, you see everybody is in opposition. Same like in 2020 when Kehau Yu was here, right? When had two nights, 100% opposition. Nobody was for the extension of the lease. So see, tomorrow night in Kahuku, I hope my Kahuku Wahana watching, I hope the generals come. And then Thursday night, I hope the generals over there too. And we're gonna show up over there too. Mahalo. Mahalo. Number 99. Number 99. She's coming. Aloha, my kakou. Colonel McGunagal and uh, honor dignitaries. Police. <laughs> All right. Um, I am simply Mak Makai Nana. I am Hanai. I I came stationed here in 2008 with the United States Army, School for Barracks, as a uh, diesel mechanic. I'm just gonna read this. Um, since you know, I'm Turtle Clan, the Water Clan, Nahonu. The sea turtles are my relatives. I'm of the Iroquois Confederacy from the first consensus democracy of Turtle Island from the Finger Lakes area of New York. The Kanakamoli took me under their wing. Their kumu as, as their haumana, and they're my kumu, and educated me with the GI Bill and the um, vo vocational rehabilitation program here in Hawaii. With much patience, much ha'a ha'a, humility, so that I could obtain a bachelor's degree in art history and Hawaiian studies. And I also went on to Hawaii Pacific for a master's, model, model, um, to study social work. But I believe it's my kuleana now. I'm simply a maka'ai nanan, Hawaiian subject. This Hawaiian kingdom, this country here, this country, it's a country that the, the European Union doesn't recognize, they ignore, NATO re doesn't recognize, our allies don't recognize, and that needs to happen, that needs to go to Biden, President Trump, our commander in chiefs, like he said, our generals, and they need to, they need to recognize that. Now, it starts now, change starts now. No more the heva eha from President Clinton, I'm sorry. We took over your kingdom. No more the fake apology. It starts now with you, sir, Colonel. The soldiers, airmen, Coast Guard, Navy, Air Force continue to be stationed here for a three year tour. Make Opala, I seen it first, I'm an eyewitness, I seen that. And then permanent change station somewhere else. Make big mess and leave, put their bombs, and their ammunition, their casings, and they leave them in the training areas. They do not clean it up. This would never happen in Germany. 
This would never happen in Germany. The Germans have their military. And they will come in and they will scold us and they will deport us because they have nuclear capabilities. The European Union has, the Hawaiians don't have nuclear capabilities. They have aloha. They have kia'i. They fight with their heart. This is a different way of fighting. They fight with their ike. They fight with their mana. They fight with their, with their lua. Hawaiian martial arts, they have a different way of fighting. It's called kapu aloha. But this is seen as weakness. This is seen as weakness. It is not a weakness. And I am so tired of it. This has caused their youth, their homeless. They don't have one home. Their youth suffer from youth suicide. They lead in suicide on their own country because of this. Eva, Eva no. you cannot ignore anymore my two Native American children kill themselves because of this war. No more. It stops now. Let the journals know these people are not afraid to die for their land. I am not afraid anymore. I've already fought. I'm sorry. I'm Can tired of it. This is on Hawaiian time. Ahupua'a'o, what a night. The homeless are living on beaches priced out by the military discount because the military is over here taking up all their land and all their funding, all their economy, all their jobs, all their housing. And your, your ali'i are living in dump. No electricity, no water. No. No, none of, no food, no. This stops today, right now. Unemployed, mental health issues, the youth have depression from all the loss. From the sonar, from the Navy in Kauai, polluting our honu, our mano, our sharks, our limu, our seaweed, our coral, everything. The taro, the water, the wealth is gone. The water is being destroyed. The Hawaiian wealth, pow, this ends today. I really do need you to wrap it up, please. Are you Hawaiian? Yes. Good, then we on Hawaiian time, aren't we? Okay. <laughs> Deliberately neglect and ignore the war crimes committed to this day. By 2029, I suggest you, you take one vote, just like the Kuei petitions. All the Hawaiians still here fighting. They're all here still fighting. There's tons of Hawaiians on the Turtle Island. Ask them if they if you take a vote. If they want if they want us here, what should we do? We have a we have a democracy, we have a constitution, we have we have a we have an agreement from my people that you stole, that the white man stole from us. They have rights under your own constitution. It stops today. It stops today. Take a vote of all the kia'i on Turtle Island. See what they say. If they say, if they check your, if they check Makua and they check and they find bombs and their keiki going there on, on all this pollution and they find pollution, then it's Pauhana. It's over. You gotta go, we gotta go. We gotta figure this out. This cannot keep happening. This genocide and ethnocide of their culture, their religion. It is a religion. It's just like Christianity and, and, and Islam. It should be respected as that. Nuclear weapons are attracting our world aggression and pollute. They're attracting our nuclear weapons, are, are, are the army's nuclear weapons are just attracting more Putins and, and North Koreans and more hate. We gotta figure this out, okay? Mahalo. Mahalo. Yeah, on 100 now. We have another 40. We're here. I'm comfy. Aloha. Uh, my name is Tressa Hoppy. Uh, I'm not Hawaiian, but no makaha mayo. This place built me, made me who I am today. Um, 
And um, Antti was up here earlier, was talking about how, you know, it's still not really even an apology from the military, and it made me think of a quote from Malcolm X, if you stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six inches, there's no progress. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. The progress is healing the wound that the blow made, and they won't even admit the knife is there. So that's sort of something to think about through this whole thing. And for context, I uh, am working on a PhD in botany at the University of Bolivia at Manoa, so I'm gonna focus on a lot of the environmental stuff because that's what I know best. I've actually been able to work, and actually still am, I'm going into work tomorrow with the Army Natural Resource Program on Oahu, which is composed of like community members, local people, cleaning up the Army's messes. We're funded because the Army got sued, and it's a great job. I'm so fortunate that I get to see Mahua, that I get to go into these places, but it shouldn't be a privilege. Everybody should be able to access their natural resources. Everybody should be able to hear an Alapayo singing, but there are so many of our keiki who don't even know that any of that is up there because all they see is haulikoa and guinea grass and all that fire risk, and they don't get to see Hawaiian nature, like they don't get to see the things that all of these mo'olelo are about and I think that that's a real shame and there is mention that it could be, you know, a problem for natural resource funding cuts with the loss of this land and I say, you know, we'll make it work because I know every single person in this room is committed to this aina, is committed and just wrapping it up super fast when it comes to uh, Environmental protection, the military is not great on it either. Again, we're cleaning up their messes all the time. CRB introduced 13 years ago at Hickam. Chromolida odorata, devil weed, extremely noxious weed, introduced by the military. Uh, the brown tree snake, which has completely decimated Guam's native bird population, was introduced by the military in the 1940s. There's a $2.13 trillion uh, military budget in 2024. That's just this year. And for context, I had to do this math, and despite being a PhD, I'm not that good at math. Uh, 2.3 trillion is 2,130 billion, and there's, a, a billion is a million, uh, it's, for context, 2,130,000 million in one year of uh, population, or of military funding, approximately 10 million of that is spent on natural resources in Hawaii, and that's 0.00004% of their funding, so. We need to prioritize our environment, we need to prioritize our aina, and most importantly, we need to listen to our kanaka Thank you. Thank you. Donovan Tusano, a long-time resident of Waimea, uh, Makaha. I'd just uh, like to uh, agree with everybody else in regards to the, the land itself. I've been here and I've seen when, when the elders used to talk, they used to talk about how life is getting uh, overpriced and, and how everything else is changing. Little story about myself, I was homeless growing up. Until you're homeless, you don't realize all the opportunities you have. The military gave me the opportunity to join the military and actually swore the uh, um, oath and constitution of the United States of America totally understand that. With people around and all these different cultures, you realize that everybody is holding on to that culture. But you can respect the worldwide requirement of if it's not the American people, it's gonna be another country. And let's just say everything else shuts down. Makua shuts down, Karuku shuts down, all these other installations shut down. Everybody else moves. All the forces leave the theater. And if you can visualize with the understanding of the Im impact statement, doing the research so that you can actually quantify, extrapolating past the point of 10 to 15 years, what happens then? If you can actually visualize the strategic location of Hawaii in where everyone is, lady out here explained in regards to how important the rest of the islands are in the Pacific and Samoan. I'm, I'm Samoan, Okinawan, Irish. So yeah, all the perimeter, the perimeter of bloodlines. But you look at my kids, Hawaiian. Four of the five are in the military forces, so understand, yeah, they swore the uh, 
allegiance to the Constitution of the United States as well. Yes, we all feel the pain of everybody else, but what the research you guys do and put into the EIS, what that entails is um, longer research and explanation, like the gentleman said, in regards to simplifying it, so I myself, as a Wai'anae High School grad, can actually read and understand what you're trying to say. So we don't have to talk like lawyers. But in the bigger picture, I, I'm, I'm pretty much understanding there's a lot of people out here are, are hurt, and that's the reason why they're transparent. They're telling you exactly what needs to happen. Take the strategic level thinking process and how it correlates with the middle of the Pacific. We're a proud people out here. And I owe that to understand how the community, I would, the homeless, until you're homeless, you don't realize. And then you realize how much you're sharing cheese with everybody else and, oh, everybody don't know where to go for use the bathroom. But knowing what I know and understanding how we can actually do more research for it. And the research that tells us when you close up these lands, tell us about the story as everything closes up. Makua closes, then Kahuku closes, and all these other ranges. Because as a soldier, I understand. You have to have a place to, to train and whatnot. But like Sister said, you leave it worse than it was when you got there. And yet, you have to enrich the cleanliness and all the, the paradise that we Sir, have. can you wrap it up, please? Yeah. yeah. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Number 102. I will keep it quick. I just want to say my personal belief, I've learned so much living here that give it back. Just, there's no reason to keep it. The unexploded ordinances, the safety issue is not enough of a reason to keep it. However, you've already mentioned that your preferred option is number two, a modified retention. So it sounds like this is, might just be, you know, checking the boxes and, you know, I understand that's how you do things. For the next one, Maybe advertise and let us know I received nothing in the mail. I had no idea this meeting was even happening, except for these kind of people. Nothing was sent to my, you, I know you have everybody's address. Um, the phone number being open for a few days, that's an insult. And then that testimony you do receive on the phone, can you please, uh, where is it? Where can we know that you actually listened to it, transcribed it? Because that is public testimony as well. And then my other half of my testimony is for my sister. Aloha Kako, Aloha Steve. My name is Ikini Lindsay, and I am from Waimea, Moku Oke Ave. I was just acres away born um, near Pohaku Loa. However, I am in support of Makua. I would like to bring in my kupuna as well as Queen Liliu Okalani and to echo again. In 1893, after Queen Lili'u Okalani was disposed, hundreds of armed American soldiers and Marines landed on Oahu to support of a new government. Equipped and ready to fire and kill our kupuna, who were armed with prayers, scriptures, himene, church hymns, tea leaf, and pa'akai. That's what our kupuna was armed with against your guns and transmissions. Upon research, your very own Honolulu resident, retired colonel, served in the Army Reserves for nearly three decades. Her name is Anne Wright. She quotes in an interview with the Hawaii Public Radio on August 20th, 2021. In a snicker manner, she quoted, the military's actions uh, do not demonstrate a great concern for local communities, their culture, and their history. The U.S. military generally wants as much as they can get, whether it be weapons or land or whatever. They don't care at all about our cultural interests. Colonel Wright is well aware of national security concerns. However, despite of the military occupied lands through military and the history, she chuckles. The dollar a year lease and what happened 75 years ago 
with World War II. Today, the military needs to make rational and diplomatic decisions, especially pertaining towards a multitude of concerns for us here, the Kanaka, the people of Hawaii. She emphasizes there are already thousands of acres in Kaniohe, thousands of acres in Pearl Harbor, thousands of acres in Schofield. The 30,000 lands are not, the 30,000 lands are not critical for use, she states. Enough is enough, Steve. 23,000 acres in Pohaku Loa that is used for administration purposes and is clearly far away from active training zone, this can be given back to Kanaka. There are many, many other stations um, that qualify, or not qualify, pardon me, um, that each marine base have thousands of administration acres that are used for administration alone. These acres can be given back to Hawaii. Steve, I hope you are able to accumulate all of our manao here. Think of your grandparents. Think of your great-grandparents. We would not bomb on your grandfather's or grandmother's grave. That is hell. Think what you are doing to our makua. All of the history with Auntie Lynette proves we traverse up to uh, to Mok, um, I'm sorry, to Mokaena. It, there, it is a heiau on Mokua. And we go and we clean there every month. I don't know if you have been there, Steve, but we would like to take you up there. I would love for you to feel the spirit, to feel the, the embracement of our heiau, of our history. Would you please come and join us? Steve, mahalo. Mahalo. Sorry, I'm getting told, the list is getting long, so I am gonna have to try to hold you folks, please, 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 to two minutes. So, number 103. 103? Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Aloha Kako. Aloha Kern Steve. Mahalo my Lord for being here. But I am not here by myself. I wear her colors today. If you know who she is. She is a moi, a queen. She stood alone in her room, and I will share this experience with all of you because of the fact I wait with her. Behind the windows, she looked down, guns pointing at her. I, you know, I have to say that this is an honor. I'm honored, real honored. I am honored to be among the, all of all of you who stand and believe in what we we know. Yes. And it is our Aina. I bring my kupunas with me. My mama, my father, because of the fact that growing up, I'm from Kapuhulu, but my heart is out here with my people. Our people, Steve. And I've been listening to all of the words. And believe me, I have taken it all in. Like the queen has taken it all in. And she had every right to will for her people. <coughs> she had every right to have them to say, you know, take it upon yourself because you have to take it upon yourself. You, 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 and you need to take that responsibility and listen, truly listen to what our people is saying. Not easy to be by yourself. The queen stood by herself and cried. 
and I had that experience with her. I cried with her. I have not told the story, but I have. So I know how she feels. I do know how she feels, and I mahalo all of you for sharing. She hears you. She does. She hears all of you. <clears throat> and the one thing that we know of is say it. A. 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 L. L. O. o. H. H. A. 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 Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Number 104. Number 104? Oh, for such a... Okay. Yes. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, sir, have you been? Have you been? Have you been? Uh, Hello, my name is James K. Manapusi. Hello, everybody. Concerned parents, grandparents, great grandparents. Yeah, I just made 87 uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Eighty-seven. No, I'm, I, that's too old. Seventy-eight. <laughs> just trying to see the numbers wrong. I, I like changing my numbers wrong, but that's too old. I normally change it wrong. wrong. When I was younger, but anyway, I've hunted that area. I've hunted there since in the early 60s with my, I learned how, what we call, um, um, uh, the Hawaiians call it uh, subsistence hunting. So I've hunted there when uh, I walked next to a bomb, almost as big as the devil thing there. I don't know how big that was. But if you go look in the records, it was the second bomb hole above the, above the, the, flat, the flat in the river. There was two of them in there. The right bomb, I found out later. Because they went put one little thing there and the thing went boom. But we used to go in there. You know, when we rest, when we came up, let the dogs run around, look for the thing. And so that's how dangerous it was. In fact, when you walk in the, to the, when you walk in the first river there from the highway and you walk straight in, we used to walk through the, the grass there. So when you watch the fire burning and you see boom, 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 that's where we used to walk to go to the first uh, pocket there. That was a very productive pocket, by the way. And you can see all the bombs that go through. So. That's how dangerous it is. So we really need your help. Yeah. And um, so when the people gave up their land, sir, they gave it up willingly. And the reason they gave it up was because they understood that when we went to war, it was important for our children to learn how to handle what they were going to handle, whether it was a gun, whether it was a weapon, or it was a cannon, whatever kind of weapon we needed, they, we knew, because I, as a hunter, I knew that if I went into a mountain, if I never knew how to, to use where I need to, where I was using, I would come home without anything. So we also knew that when our children went to war, we wanted them to come back. So it was important for us. So when, we, when you asked us, we, you, that you needed the valley, or wherever you needed. We accepted what you need. So, now that it's true, we want it back. So we're asking you, we want it back. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Number 105. Avapui Chanel Kalau Uli Robinson. I'm going to just drop my last name for context, yeah, because I inherited that through marriage. So technically, my name is Avapuhi Kalau. I am alive today, continuing to carry my kupuna and my heritage into 2024. I am grateful because I know where to start 
searching for what is owed to my family. The last name Kalauli is a lineal heir to Kahana Haiki, also known as Makua, which was posted and acknowledged in the newspaper in 1858. That's 166 years my family has been carrying my name. I wish there was more of my family here, but most have moved from our Aina, died trying to win it back, and there's just not enough of us left. This is for my papa, John Mac Chuchu Kapule Kaai Ohelo Kalauli Kaava Kale Kula. Our grant number is 2362. Our land commission award is 556, I don't know, the dot one, and 5562. The tax map key is 18100011. It belongs to the United States. I am here in opposition of the lease continuing. I request that at the very least, my family's lands be returned. I look at this room. I cry for our people. We are here today pleading for our existence. And yet, what reparations have been given? Speaking of reparations, will the Mocha to Makai report from October 23rd, 2000 be applied to the Hawaiian people? What is that report? I will tell you. It's called, From Mauka to Makai, the River of Justice Must Flow Freely. It is a report of reconciliation process between the federal government and the Native Hawaiians prepared by the Department of Interior and the Department of Justice on October 23rd, 2000. This is 2024. Is the 95 pages that you guys put together ever gonna be done? Is anything gonna be done? I have also read the land surplus lease summary. That's in the hawaii.gov website. It's public lahui. You can see they've taken over 432,000 acres. Can the native people not have something? It's called land surplus. Just give it back. Why am I here? Haven't the federal government taken enough from my family? Haven't you taken enough from the lahui? My family alone has lost lands in Makua, Nawili Wili, Waiahole, Kahalu'u, Kukui Opai, which is Ocean View, they changed the name. Paala Ka'a, Waipio, that's in Oahu, Ka'u, and who knows how many more lands? How many in this room have lost lands as well? I stand here today to say this isn't over. Until the reparations are provided and the native Hawaiian people can rise, until the lands are returned and our people stop dying, and I am in direct opposition because I am the heir to my family, the Kala Uli family, and our name is Kala Uli Pa Uli Uli Auhea O Ke Koa, and we will not allow the United States to continue leasing our land. <laughs> One oh six. One oh six going one. Aloha, my kako. My name is Candice Fujikane. I'm an English professor at the University of Hawaii, and I speak directly to you, Colonel Steve McGonagall. Uh, I speak to you so that you can hear all of this powerful testimony as a human being. The highest ethical imperative in life is to do no harm. Everyone in this room has been negatively impacted, has been harmed by the presence of the military in Hawaii. Psychologically, intellectually, spiritually, physically, all of those ways. So I call for the end of the leases. Now there was an alternative number nine on the EIS and that would have led to the end of the lease and the military leaving and it says for some other place. I don't want them to go some other place. I just want them to leave. It is so important for the health and the survival of everyone in this time of climate change that the military exacerbates the conditions of 
So when you look at the summary of environmental impacts on table ES-3, we see that alternatives one, two, and three all result in, quote, new long-term significant adverse impacts will occur unequivocally. They're just saying that's going to happen. It's not a question. Associated with military use of the land in the conservation district, which is not an allowable use under HAR chapter 13-5, it also clearly states that the military is not an acceptable use on conservation land. So the United States is in effect breaking its own laws if it extends the lease to the military. Environmental law has two purposes. One is to protect what is left, and two, to repair what is damaged. And that is what we want. We want the land restored. We want the land to be able to heal so that the people can heal. Thank you. Number 107. Oh, yes, sir, loud and clear. You know, I don't know what is special, so I just, I like to say something, I like to say something. I'm uh, Kanaka, born and raised over here in Wainai, all my life. Uh, I know one thing, the military, the military government, you guys don't care about us Hawaiians. You guys don't care about us. You guys take, you guys take, and you guys destroy, bro. Everybody came up here before me, you listen to their voices. I don't know if you, Mr. Mr. Steve, can feel, you feel their hurt. Do you hear the pain in their voice from what this guy is fighting for and what they go through? Because I do, and everybody else in this room do. You guys, just take from us. You guys take our sacred lands. And what you guys do, you guys drop bombs on them. Like somebody said earlier, no, you wouldn't like nobody come bomb your grandparents' grave, but you guys do that to us local Hawaiians and stuff. You guys do that, that's not right. And you guys just, you guys, it's time for go home and give us back our land and just give the Hawaiians back what we deserve and stop taking from us guys because you guys is killing our culture we're already dying fading out but you guys adding to me you guys just destroying our lands killing our culture and that's not that's not nice and that's not right and you know that's not right so enough is enough thank you for being here and taking this all in Aloha Number 108. Aloha, my name is Amy Wake. I'm a United Methodist pastor, born and raised here in Aiea, in um, on Oahu. Um, my church is in the process of repentance for our part in the overthrow and the illegal annexation of Hawaii. And sometimes repentance hurts. It's not going to be easy but it can be easy for you. 60,000 acres is nothing compared to the rest of the land that you have here in Hawaii, but it can mean the world to the people here in Hawaii. I have served churches in Pearl City and downtown Honolulu and out now out in Wailai, and everywhere I go, homelessness and poverty is a significant problem that the churches try to repair and, 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 and make new, to bring an end to the suffering of people. It takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of commitment. And that is what we're asking from the military. 60,000 acres will not hurt you, but it will help us, and it will help Hawaii to be a new place. When I was growing up here in Hawaii, I always thought you just couldn't help that the cost of living was so high. You couldn't help that there was not enough land for everybody to live on. You couldn't help that there was homelessness. But we know that that's not true. There's plenty of land. God created this world with enough abundance for all of creation, human and animal and nature. We just have to be willing to make the step, to share it, to do justice to our world. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Sorry. Yeah. 109, please. 109. Oh, hello. I'm not going to go right hello, in. Hello, I'm Tudor Okay, so for the record, my name is William Ila Jr. Um, I think I have to say um, for that young lady, Hafi, it's really important that uh, you understand that her testimony was that of an individual and not um, an official that um, Kokos the Army with Restoration. So it's very important that that point is clear. Um, okay, so I prefer the no action alternative, that the Army keeps its promise made to Uncle Ivan Honda'ibi in 1941 and all the other families who were forcefully removed. They didn't, they didn't give in, they didn't want to move. They were removed by gunpoint. They had an hour to load all of their ukana on the truck and they were placed um, just on the other side of the hill at Ohiki Lolo. And Uncle Ivan was told by the people who had the guns drawn on them that no worry, after the war, you guys can come back, okay? So the war was done, I think, in 1946, 47. My history is a little bad, but he tried to come back. And then in 1963, when that lease was about to expire, Uncle Ivanhoe, with the help of other folks, went to the legislature to try to get the 1964 lease not ex expanded. So I would say not only return the acreage that you're talking about, the 400 plus acreage, but also return the 4,000 plus acres of ceded lands that were taken during that wartime. It wasn't with the permission of the people of Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, very important about this question. He who controls the question controls the answer. So this is for the EIS. The EIS is flawed. The real question should be, what is the impact of 100 years of military occupation of Makua on the generations of people from Wayana? That really should be the question. We should be studying that. And then, uh, so I did read, I would say about three quarters of the EIS, but I got so frustrated that I stopped. So here's why. In the purpose and need section, specifically to Makua, because I'm speaking, because I was brought here by Uncle Ivanhoe and Auntie Frenchie de Soto. Uh, my involvement in Makua is mainly to those kupuna and other kupuna. So I'm gonna speak mainly to Makua. So it says the Army needs state lands for, and then a number of conditions. The lands are essential for connecting maneuver areas throughout the island of Oahu. Makua, no. There is critical U.S. owned facilities and infrastructure located on the state um, lease lands. The answer is no. The retention of state uh, lease lands at Makua is important for non-life fire company size uh, training. The answer is no. The lease, oh, the loss of state lease lands would result in impacts um, to the mission critical training of the Army because they would have to move to other maneuver areas. Other lands are not available. That's not true. Other lands are available. And I will point that out in just a second. So again, the answer is no. So the four or five critical things that you, your EIS says is important for Makua to be released no, 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 the answer is very clear. No, 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 you have alternatives to that. Now I wanna point out that um, I looked at all the places that you listed that were alternative training areas. And one thing that stood out to me, and I understand it now after reading this, because a question that's flawed is, what is the impact to the Army of the loss of state leased lands? Okay. So the analysis is flawed because that's the only thing that it looks at. When in reality, I'll give you an example. Let's say this park over here for football training for the Pop Warner kids was lease land, state lease lands. And you came to us and you said, hey, we absolutely need that, that foot field over there because without it, you know, our team is not going to be good. But you don't tell us that you're using the field in Makaha 
the field in Wainai, the field in Wainai Valley, the field in Nanakuli, and the field someplace else. You're not telling us what the alternatives are. Never once is Schofield mentioned as a place where, let's say, the training you want to do in Makua, aviation, i.e. helicopters and unmanned aerial uh, unmanned aerial um, drones, okay? You can train with drones anywhere that you have land right now, including Schofield, but Schofield is not in here. So if Auntie Frenchie was here, this is what she would say to you, because I know Auntie Frenchie, yeah. pretty good. She would say, what? Look like I get stupid written on my forehead. <laughs> Wait, I gotta turn around, I gotta look. No, you no. no nobody gets stupid written on their foreheads over here. So, the EIS is a bunch of sheep behind. We try to focus our, our attention on what is the impact to the military on these specific lands, but there's no analysis of other lands that are already available to you where you're flying helicopters and where you're flying these unmanned um, drones. And so that is a critical flaw. I suggest you go back and talk to the attorneys, especially in light of the Supreme Court's decision regarding Chevron, where there's no difference to the official government agency anymore. It's not, we gotta defer to you because you know what's best. It's like, let's, let's go deal with the facts. And the fact here, Colonel, and, and I like you, you're a good guy. Fact here, Colonel, is your EIS is flawed. Your analysis is flawed because you're hiding the ball from us. So how can we truly comment if you're hiding the ball, right? You're only telling us about that football field over there, but you're not telling us about all the other football fields that you already get training. And that maybe with yeah. all those football fields, you have enough training. Yeah. You don't need that one over there. Yeah. So you don't need Makua. Yeah. You can give Makua back. Just as I think yeah. everyone in the audience is saying. And please take this message back from Eddie Frenchie. We no more stupid written on our foreheads. Oh. Thank you very much. Number one time. Hey, aloha nui loa, everybody. Uh, Ko'u Ino and Nicholas Daniel Ball, son of Utah. Um, you know, I'm a student of the Waianae Moku. I'm a Haumana. And uh, I just wanted to come up here tonight to talk to you not as a Hawaiian, but as an American uh, that does care about what's happening to his neighbors out here in the Pacific on the front line. Oh, and uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, all the everybody up here on the stage tonight. So first, I would like to open up with some very wise words. Um, this is what hit me when I decided I wanted to speak out and do something about this as an American, was, oh, honest Americans as Christians, <clears throat> hear me from my downtrodden people. Their form of government is as dear to them as yours is precious to you. Quite warmly as you love your country, so they love theirs. With all your goodly possessions covering a territory so immense that there yet remain parts unexplored, possessing islands that although near at hand had to be neutral ground in time of war. Do not covet the vineyard of Naboth so far from your shores, lest the punishment of Ahab fall upon you, if not in your day, in that of your children. For be not deceived, God is not mocked. Queen Lily Okalani, 373-1898. You know, bless her and um, you know, I come from the Ball Ohana. There was a man on the other side of that message, uh, Thomas H. Ball. We're not genealogically related, I just found out, but our position is the same. He said in that day in Congress in 1898, when he, he, like, I'm assuming he saw this, this appeal. He said, um, gentlemen, what you are attempting to do here in regards to the joint resolution is unlawful, unconstitutional, and unwise. It is a very deliberate attempt to do unlawfully that which cannot be done lawfully. 
And, um, you know, as an American, we, I took an oath to be here. I, I came out here by chance, not by choice, as a Marine Corps infantryman, just like the men that were sent here to do that act of war. And it makes me very angry, not only as an American, but a Marine, that we were used for the wrong reason. We are not to instill tyranny. We are not to take over our neighbors. We're not to bully them. We are the, supposed to be the first to write, or fight for right and freedom. The most dec one of the most decorated military officers um, in the history of the United States of America was Smedley Darlington Butler. Sir, I wanted to appeal to you with this. Um, he wrote the book, War is a Racket. So we have the most decorated man in the uniform at the time. This is before World War II. He came out of the Bonus Army March and he told all the veterans that were there, you know, just like how we have our native tenants that are suffering all over the Pacific, having high suicide rates, so are the veterans that have to carry this out for the few. You know, the, 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 the many pay for when the few want to do tyranny and bully our neighbors, and it's usually our service members, the ones who shoulder the rifle. Let them vote. Let the ones who shoulder the rifle decide if they want to go take over their neighbors, and I bet they'll say nay is what I am. But, you know, everybody, I, I want to mention, um, War is a Racket. It's a book. It's by Smedley Darlington Butler. Please check it out. He was, that was before World War II, before the bombs dropped out here. Get the target off Hawaii. Get the target off the Hawaiian Kingdom. Uh, honestly. And, um, I need you to wrap it up, please. Oh, oh call him mine. And um, now, um, also for, for you, Sarah, there was a man named Albert H. Silva. You know, I mentioned I'm Homana. He was a Waianae, uh, you know, a huge man in the community, from what I understand. And he said, um, you know, this is his word, sorry if I butcher it, I'm pretty sure I can get it right though. He said, when the, the Waianae way and the Hawaiian way is when they come to you and ask you for help, they're giving you a chance. They're giving you a chance to prove you're good. And you know, I received that same chance, and sir, I know you're not gonna make the decisions around all this, I know you're a messenger. And you know, on behalf of my kupuna, on behalf of my family, I weave this lay for you. And just to show what I learned here in Rome from the Romans, I know you don't make the decisions, and I felt the pain you're probably feeling hearing the pain these guys have. So, Monica, you everybody, oi Number 111. Number 111. Aloha, Representative. Can you hear? Okay. Aloha, Mike Falco. My name is Cedric Oswinga Gates. I'm a lifelong native of the beautiful Waianae Coast. I'm born and raised Makaha boy. I'm here to stand with my community of 96792 to testify on behalf of the 25,000 plus residents that I'm honored to represent to tell the military that Makua Valley should not be retained by the US Army, especially after 2029 and should be restored and cleared of all UXOs and be returned to its rightful people, our community of Waena. As the representative of 96792, every year I introduce legislation to return Makua back to our people because it's obvious that it's the Pono thing to do. But we haven't seen the support for the bill because I know the military opposes these type of policies. But now you have the opportunity to take that upon yourself. Most recently, we added Luolule Naval to the list of lands that we would like to also see return to our Wainai Moku in the legislation that we introduce every year. Our community and I also strongly supported a bill that was introduced in Congress by former Representative Kahele um, named the Leandro Y Act. Through this process, my heart and mind are with the many Ohana and lineal descendants who were once caretakers of this sacred place but were evicted from Mokua during the war and land grab. It was a bittersweet moment to be in Makua with our kupuna to celebrate the US government signing of a document stating there will no longer need Makua for live firing. If that is truly the case, I see no need to retain this sacred item. In closing, I would like to say mahalo nui loa to the many residents and our kupuna who came before us to stop the desecration and keep the agenda to Malama Makua alive along with other initiatives. They have sincerely inspired me to continue the good fight as a community member and now as a life as an elected official. Along with educating all of us on how important this aina is to our people, our culture, and our history. I look forward to seeing the continuation of the live firing agreement and ultimately seeing Makua Valley restored to the majestic place it once was. Mahalo to the military for hosting tonight's meeting. 
My hope is that you will hear sincerely the voices and hearts of our people and provide your assistance and full support to clean up all the UXOs and toxins before the aina is rightfully returned to our native Hawaiian community. Mahalo. Mahalo, Mr. The mayor has, dis has destroyed our ecosystem, and I also like to say, please leave in 2029. Mahalo. Mahalo. Well, I don't know who can come after that, but 113. <laughs> Aloha, Tara Rojas. So I just want to bring a lot of this heva that has been hidden to the light. So from this www.history.navy.mil, the development of the naval establishment in Hawaii, but includes the army and administrative history. It says right here, just excerpts. In 1895, when the Royalists attempted a counter-revolution in a more American warship's presence, dampened the possibility for success. The provisional government under Sanford Doe made the final pill for annexation when the military necessity of the islands became apparent. This, this, is, this is false narrative. Hawaii was thriving before you all arrived. Annexation was approved on July 6, 1898, and on August 12, 1898, the US flag was run up over the palace. And by the way, that's false. There is no treaty of annexation. And it says here another excerpt, excerpt, the connivingness of the military here in Hawaii. One of the early concerns of the growing station was that the army would make claims on its property. Because of their facilities as wharves, cranes, artesian wells, and coal supplies, many requests were made by the army for their use. On, by February 1901, the army had made application for the privilege of establishing on Navy docks movable cranes for handling coal and other stores a saluting battery and a flagstaff on the naval reservation and an artesian well of its own. All these requests were rejected by the Bureau of Equipment on the theory that once granted, they will practically constitute a permanent foothold on the property and end in dividing in between the two departments or in the entire exclusion of the Navy Department on the ground of military expediency as established by frequency of use. So I say to that, so if Kanaka Maoli can buy frequency of use, take back and live on their land, then all land should be returned. Yeah, and it says right here, I'll skip on this, well, I have, to, I have to include this. However, the Army Depot Quartermaster at Honolulu contracted for the sinking of an artesian well on the Naval Station with the commandant's approval, who in turn acted on the recommendation of the Bureau of Yards and Docks. The flow of water obtained amounted to over a million and a half gallons per day, sufficient for all purposes of the Army and Navy. The Bureau of Equipment felt that its word of caution was justified when the depot quartermaster in 1902 let it be known that any water used by the Navy from the artesian well was only given by courtesy of the Army. So all this us usurping of the land continues in this document. Basically, there is no price on the land and I'm just gonna end with this last one. It says at the end, in an intelligence report of 1928, the commandant accused the territorial governor of playing politics on the racial issue. He felt that the governor and his administration resented the keen interest manifested by the army and Navy officials in the population problems of the islands. It was his opinion that prominent businessmen regarding the army and Navy establishments as cons constituting the fourth largest industry in the islands after sugar, pineapples, and the tourist trade. These these do not represent Hawaii. Enough is enough. And finally, just an analogy. I thought of this. Your presence here, the military's presence here, is literally like those new rubbish cans in Waikiki. <laughs> Basically, they're unnecessary and they only pollute the area. So by the way, I told the general face to face in the BLNR meeting that we do not want any lease renewal to clean up and leave in 2029. So to him, as well as to you, please take it up the command. Mahalo. Thank you very much. 114, please. Hey, Mahalo. My name's Kileona. Um, I'm not ancestry from here. Uh, this is Moku, but I have ancestry to Kauai and Hawaii Island. 
Uh, I do teach over here though, and I see Hamana of mine passed in this crowd, and that makes me so damn proud because my largest piece of activism is education. So I'm not speaking on behalf of YNI today, I'm speaking on behalf of all the kupuna before me and all the generations that'll come after me. We are the people of this land. My ancestors died and became this land, fed the kalo that created my ancestors, that created me, and I will become the soil to become the next generation's food. You guys don't understand that, and that's the problem. You don't understand that we are this land. Desecrating this land is desecrating us, literally. This land was illegally occupied in 1893. There was no treaty of annexation. The treaty did not get two-thirds of the House votes. A joint resolution was passed, which is not used for international suits. Therefore, today, Hawaii is still in a, illegally occupied. You broke your own constitution to do that. There's no treaty. The audacity that you even have as a military to think that we would ever allow a renewal is ridiculous. The reason being, look what you've done already. Mokapu. You dug up over 4,000 of our ancestors to build the Clipper Golf Course in the name of national security. You took Kaholave, our sacred navigational island, and bombed it to the point where it's unsustainable today. You took Red Hill and poisoned your own people, including ours. You made Pearl Harbor the breadbasket of Hawaii, the most polluted military base in America. American occupation, for that matter. You guys have a history of not cleaning up. The pillboxes are evident of that. Military take up too much Hawaii. What we need is more of you out of here because we are being priced out. We make up 19% of the state's population, the illegal state. We make up less than 12% of this island's population. We are the minorities in our own land. 60 acres and uh, 60,000 acres is nothing to you considering all the land you already illegally occupy. We are the houseless. We are the homeless. We are the most incarcerated. We are the most impoverished. What Uncle Sparky said was right. We need a fourth option because the fact that you're not giving us that option is the same thing you did with statehood when you gave us two options to stay a territory or become a state. No independence, which is bullshit. I think my shirt says enough of my positionality on this. But at the end of the day, I hope to God that you guys actually listen to all the people here because if that gets renewed, we know that this was a bunch of bureaucratic bullcrap and our voices didn't even matter because I think we have spoken. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo. Man. Rosetti. I carry my grandmother's name and I'm here for her today, our kupuna. I'm here for my students, for my own keiki, for our future. I'm here for the people who came before me, for the people who will come after me, especially for them. Because especially as a kumu, as somebody who grew up in this community and who is now raising the future of this community, I need you to know that it's time to leave. The heva that I carry in my heart, that all of the people here carry in our hearts, that my grandmother, my great-grandmother carried until they died. I don't want that for the keiki of Waianae. I don't want that for the keiki of Oahu, of Hawaii, of Pacifica. This is not supposed to be happening here. It shouldn't have started. And now there's an opportunity for it to end. And that opportunity should be taken. It's a very serious matter. Because you folks don't see the faces the kids make when they realize that the facts I put in front of them are real. And they realize that there's a lot more built against them than they thought. 
and they know that there's already a lot against them coming from out here. So, on behalf of my kupuna, on behalf of all of my kiki, in school, the one I have at home too, it is time to go. Uh, Mahalo for your time. Mahalo, Mahalo. Number 116. Mahalo guys for giving us this opportunity to talk. My name is Dr. David Klein. I finished my doctorate in chemistry at the University of Hawaii in Manoa. During that time, I took classes with Hanani Trask and I learned a lot about Hawaii, having been from Texas when I first got here. After that, I went to Koholawe for 40 years. I was there when the island was given back. Koholawe was cleaned of 75% of the UXOs after $350 million was spent and there's still more UXOs coming out today. On Kohlabi, they told me one time, if you buy a car and the police stop you, and they tell you your car is stolen, is it yours or is it stolen? You've heard today, I think you're dealing with the state, and they're dealing with the stolen land. So you're trying to buy something from a place that doesn't have a legitimate title to what it is you want. Mokua stopped live fire. So why do you need it? Because it's expensive to clean up. That's the problem. There's no islands in the Pacific that need that training anymore. And having been from Texas, I can say that I know there are 29,000 native Hawaiians on the Hawaiian home list that has been there since 1921. And they could certainly use the lands that the military is not really using for anything now. My suggestion is to take this and move it to Texas. They like you there. They have a million acres of land in Texas. They want you in Texas. Mahalo. Um, I kako everything that was said previous to me, so I try not to repeat it. What I'm thinking about is, I got excited when I learned of 2029 being, when we, all the lands returned back from the military to the Hawaii State, to the people. I started thinking, what can we do with Makua Valley? I thought, oh, education, wouldn't it be awesome? Possible pathways for youth or keiki? I thought of agriculture. Oh man, what can we grow there? What uh, more food? Uh, and then I thought of food security, which is a big issue nowadays, and probably going forward with our climate change getting worse. Um, so possible new career pathways, more jobs. Um, again, regarding the food, or we turn more into agricultural land, uh, so that we produce more food for the islands by our people. Um, housing, uh, also the housing choices that Hawaii is having. Uh, that's another possibility. Um, my mind was just going wild, just going rapid, all these different possibilities. So my view is, I'm thinking, we are going to get back the land when the lease is up in 2029. Um, next step is, what do we see from Makua Valley? Um, oh, and by the way, there is another option we can offer you. Give us the money back to clean up the place for you. Mahalo. Mahalo. One, one, eight. One, one, eight. Bring once. Going twice, okay, one, one, nine. Okay, and then, Bikini, you were 120, right? You were one, yeah, okay. 121. What number are you? 121. No. Okay. Did 118 ever show up? No. No. Go for it. Okay, sure. Okay. Okay, aloha. I'd like to um, 
I'd like to divide my testimony into two sections. So the first one I want to, I, I would like to speak to you as a human being, as to everyone who's part of the U.S. military here representing the U.S. military as on the human level. And um, I want, the main thing that I want to say there is that when I speak to the U.S. military, I want you to know that I'm not speaking to you. And um, I want you to know why, because um, all of the things that we collectively have to say to the United States military, um, for one thing, they may be harmful to you to hear them and not be able to do anything about it, but it's also very, very harmful to the people to speak to a human being. You know, that's the way that aloha works, right? That when we give our aloha, we're speaking truth. Even if it's hurt, even if it's angry, it's still aloha. And to present this truth to you in aloha, there's an expectation that as a human being, you can, um, you will reciprocate and take this very clear message. This is a very clear message. And act accordingly, which would mean to do none of the options. You know, it would mean to end the lease. Um, we know from history that that's never happened before. Um, so I just want to say I, I, I've got something to say to with that I want to say something to the United States military and I want to be very clear that I'm not saying this to you okay because um, in order to pre protect our health I think that we need to be able to speak clearly only to the US military and um, and uh, my young uh, folks over there who are who have been helping out might be able to help me out in this it's very short No lease on stolen lands. No lease on stolen lands. Don't touch us with your bloody hands. Don't touch us with your bloody hands. U.S. military out. U.S. military out. Real peace is what we're talking about. Real peace is what we're talking about. Take your bombs. Take your trash. Take your bombs.
or my kakua po. My name is Elton Maglianes, aka Poki. I am uh, the lead of uh, what well, initiated my nice first Halimua. I also represent Nakua Maunaala. And I am in opposition of the extended lease of Makua and any other occupied space the military has. For generations, have upon our land, desecration on our resources, unusable resources, literally blown to smithereens, decimated resources. Ecosystems that cannot be replaced. This is what you guys did. You hear it from our people? I am here, I was here back in 97, seeing our Ole and beat it. Standing here with the handfuls of Nakua, still here, I'm amazed. With anti French di Soro, anti Tiola Silva, Pokala Inui, Uncle Manaku. Uncle Bill Aila, Glenn Kila, all of our Nakua, even the young ones. I was young at that time with Tita Anela Maunakea. But I wanted to be here, present, to see you on your way out. Yeah. Aloha means hello, but aloha also means goodbye. 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 Okay. We have been traumatized. I lost uncles serving your military, family members affected by Agent Orange during Vietnam. My uncles dealing still today with PTSD, resulting in suicide, meds. Okay. Our people cannot take this anymore. And thank goodness, Lahui brought your Kamali. They have to be here. And I encourage all of Lahui, make more babies, make more warriors. Send them to me, let's train them. All your kani, send them to me, let's train them. And show the military what real Kwa is about. Mahalo Steve for catching all the spears today. It takes a real man to be and for catch all the spears, because you get all of these invisible spears coming at you, bro. <laughs> and I see them. Your head, your ear, your knees. Brother, you got, okay? So when you go home, before you go home, jump in the waters of Makua. Give them to Kanaloa. Peel all that e hair out and repent. Repent the heaven, your leadership. Mahalo la hui. Make more babies, more soldiers. Mahalo. One twenty-two. Hello, hello, brother. Every time I come to this board meeting, but my name is Michael William Capolino Eli. I'll pony all ko Hawaii pa aina. Okay. I come to this board meeting, the board meeting every time, and ask the military. Deoccupy, ko Hawaii pa aina. You gotta, you gotta go. We like the whole archipelago back, not just here, there. We like the whole archipelago. The kingdom owned the whole archipelago. The whole archipelago. Not just one, one piece, Makua. What you guys see from? The state? The state don't even own them. You see all the owners, they're all over here, heirs and successors. We all heirs and successors over here. You know what I mean? We get the land title, just like what they said. I go, where you live, where you live? Yeah? What land you own? So what if I come over and take your land away from you? How would you feel? Yeah? Yeah, how would you feel? So it's been like 130 years. So you can still picture reading the crime from 1893, still yet. What is today? 2024. You guys still right here? Occupying, gotta de occupy. So once you guys deoccupy, you know the state representatives and all them guys, if they let be American, they can go too with you guys. You know what I mean? Because I think so we can, we, we can do our own thing over here, you know what I mean? 
I do. No. You don't, right? There's no treaty, no land, no law. Because you guys no more treaty, so you, the state have no law. Listen to this one again now. They say, what, 430,000 acres? So what, you guys rent dollar? One dollar for 430,000 acres or something? I keep on giving them to the military and say, how much you guys uh, lease the land from the state? What, dollar one acre or dollar 10,000 acres? I keep bringing them to you guys, but I don't get the, the reaction at the board meeting. The answer, because you guys just pass the buck every time your new guy come, a new guy come. Every month, you have a new, what, what, Steve? Yeah, so you, you represent the money, you only, the, the army, but you only rep the kind, you only pass the buck. After what, you're gonna go to Kahuku. All those lads gotta give back, and you guys gotta clean them up. Clean up you guys' rubbish. All you guys' bombs gotta be pristine, like how Schofield came when they take over. Gotta be pristine like that. Gotta be clean where we can plant. Cause that's what we all supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be chasing money. That's what we do right now. We chasing the money, man. The money don't work nothing, you know. Sir. Cause the inflation is mean. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay. I get one more. Um, you guys still, the war crime is still happening right now. If it was kingdom, the head, you see the head right there, the kingdom. They cut off the head, you know, for real, in the public. But um, Allah, everybody, <laughs> all couple, sorry, sorry for, but that's, that's the kingdom rules, you know. Allah. Mahalo, Mahalo, Nui. 123, again, 123, thank you. Thank you for your patience. I'm not 123, I'm Johnny Mee Perry. I speak in behalf of my late cousin Walter B. B. Eldegur. She was very much involved with um, Makua um, back in the 70s and she did the Makahiki every year and she was very close to Leandra Y. Um, she, my cousin Walter B. passed last year. This month she would have been 72. Um, so I, I, I think she, I will answer that she probably would say no action, dismiss from Hawaii. Mahalo, mahalo. One twenty-three, please. One twenty-three. Is that is he coming? Hello, 123. Okay, 124. Sure. Aloha, Ahiaki Kako. Ovao o cross makani crab. No wa enai mai ao. He pua o keia bahino holike o kapoe o habai. Aloha, my name is Cross Makani Crab, born and raised in Wet and I, and I'm here to testify against the renewing of military leases. I would like to share an Olelo no Eao or Hawaiian proverb. Ho'iho ikeehu mehemoila returns to the broiling sea like a moi fish, which means people who leave home to get better skills eventually come back. Let me stress, you're not talking to dummies over here, okay? Or degenerates. There are people here, including myself, who have left our home to become more educated, and there are those who have educated themselves from the resources here. And we all gather here today to speak our truth. Our truth is that we have suffered enough. We have suffered enough. For the second draft of your EIS on page 445, section five, page 27, lines 11 through 14, under unavoidable significant adverse impacts, specifically cultural impacts. You folks state, a large new lease would sustain feelings of emotional and psychological distress, as well as an ongoing perception of that their traditional and culturally important land is under an unjust military occupation. This is not just a perception, this is a reality. This is our reality. 
The military was used to steal our land, our language, and culture. In fact, we are blessed that those before us fought so we could voice our opinions here tonight without fear of being shot or imprisoned. I want to feel bad for you folks having to deal with all of this. I really do, but I cannot. Your institution did this to itself. And it's a legacy that you folks are going to have to decide if you'll be on the right side of history or not. Give the land back and clean up your mess. I call my Uncle Israel Kamaka Bibo Ole into this space when I say, from West Makaha to Mount Ka'ala, Eola Makua. Aloha, my Kako. Aloha. Aloha. Colonel Steve. Colonel Steve, right on. O mai kapoi hilani ko noa no kalihi mai ao aka no ho ao i alia pa akai maka ao ao Red Hill. Aloha. My name is Mai, and I'm originally from Kalihi, far far away that side. Just so you know, um, it took a lot of effort to come here tonight. But as Papa and Wahualua gave birth to this island Oahu, what happens on one side of the island affects us all. And you need to know that. There are thousands of us on the other side of the island who couldn't be here tonight. So we bring this message together in solidarity to you. I am married to an active duty service member. Our family was poisoned by Red Hill. And we're still being poisoned. So I know intimately of the distrust by the military. And I know it has to stop. But I'm going to focus on the land that is rightfully ours, that needs to be given back. I am in opposition to extending the lease for the military. Because I told my husband, I'm a Kanaka Maoli first, I just happen to be married to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am Hawaiian now forever. And I noticed that those three parcels of land do not house a single service member or family. I didn't know that there were over 120,000 military service members and their families living on this island alone. According to uncle, that's, that's more Kanaka Maoli on this island, right? Military represents 11% and Kanaka Maoli is only, what, 11, 12? That's got to change. And did you also know that the military make up 20% of the real estate investments, investments in Hawaii. There are way too many military service members here. These areas do not house military service members. The military is unsustainable on our islands. They need to give us back the land, and some of them need to leave. And if it happens in my lifetime, I will be the first one in line with my ohana and my active duty service member to PCS out of here if they tell us for go. Because I know my family will be back. I have Kuleana here. But I know it is a pono thing to do to send some military members away. And that is what should happen. Give us back our land, clean it up. Actually, let us clean it up. We'll do a better yes. job. Mahalo. Aloha, aloha kako. My name is Kawila Sheldon. I gotta talk real fast because I gotta talk about 100 years of, um, of ruins uh, within three minutes. Oh my goodness. Right. Okay, so I am from Ko'ola Aloha, but I have experience, I mean, I have aloha for Makua Valley. My personal experience at Makua Valley in 2009, a friend and I went to the valley to do community work. When we signed our waivers, it said things like, your entire reserve Nation is dangerous and, uns and unsafe due to the presence of surface and substance unexploited ordinances in both letters and capital letters. Says that like says that in capital letters. Uh, before I go further, I'd like to thank the Wainai community and I also like to thank uh, Malama Makua, um, Uncle Sparky, Auntie Leandra, Lesser in Heaven, and um, Auntie Lynette Cruz, and all the Kupuna and the Wainai community that has um, took it, taken care of um, Makua Valley. And, and taking um, space there. Okay. Um, while we walked from site to site, we came across a spring that was said to have ono water. 
of vine, which is divine to our people. There was also archaeological sites that made connections to my friend and I. We were also followed by scary military men with a beret, with berets and really big and strong. I remember one wearing a beret looking like Navy SEALs. It makes me sad that some, something so sacred, so beautiful has been blown up to pieces. It also makes me sad that the U.S. military failed in paying for the continuing cleanup for Cajo Olave as well. And although it has made efforts to clean up Makua Valley, it is not all clean. It only reports halfway clean. They are, and they are favoring a, a lease, 65 year lease renewal, to continue training. Various articles from Civil Beat have statements like things like Army says Makua Valley no longer needed for life firing. Oh, if you guys are going to do foot military strategies there, then you're bringing in the fungi, bringing in invasives, you're bringing in things on your clothes. One more thought, one more thought. Continue training in combat on foot could cause further harm to the native species. The articles that I have read about Makua Valley, documentation where people were dispossessed and kicked out of the land, and the videos. The Makua Military Reservation includes three valleys, Makua, Kahanaiki, and Koiyahi, which are home for over 40 endangered and threatened species. A legal document dated November 30th, 2023, Makua versus Lord Austin III, and mahalo for Earth Justice for um, putting that on their website. Defendants acknowledge three things for you guys to clean up. The UXOs, we kind of clean up the UXOs. I think you guys should be cleaning up the UXOs. Um, and then we can, um, we can oversight that. Renewing a lease with them, without cleaning up shows irresponsibility, mistrust, and disrespect. It is easy to make a mess and challenging to clean up. The military here ha is like little children. No can clean up and cannot, therefore, to mitigate further damage and destruction, they make all these excuses. I suggest that the U.S. training should include learning how to clear UXOs and any ordinances left at the site he should be the ultimate goal for the U.S. military instead of looking for trouble, looking for wars. Um, peace needs to be established here. And mahalo for showing up. Your, you know, your, your bosses actually are the ones that should be here. You know, that ones that make the decision. And you gotta take this heat. But know that the, that we are aloha aina, and I hope that you feel that love and that reverence and that respect. Mahalo. Mahalo, Nui. One twenty-seven, please. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello. My name is uh, Richard Lanford, uh, born and raised out here. People that uh, uh, born and raised out here pretty much know me. I grew up on the streets. Uh, being a child of the 40s and then uh, living through the 50s and 60s, uh, unfortunately, my, my dad, my granddad, uh, they all was military. All my uncles, when they meet, or well, even on the weekend, they're all uh, military. So, you know, we had to uh, understand and accept the military. A lot of my uncles, my dad even worked at uh, NED because that was a place that they could get jobs and stuff. But all my uh, experiences growing up here on the coast for the last 77 years, if you ask me about the military, they have given us nothing. They have given us absolutely nothing. Whether they're with the, whether with the Navy or whether with the Army, I, I, I can see, you know, projects that was done in foreign countries where the Army would go and help build roads and stuff like that. Whenever we have, we, we have anything that we need help with out here, the Army don't do nothing. The Navy don't do nothing. So they're just here to occupy our, occupy our land. They're just here to take advantage of any so-called conflicts with other countries which shorten their air time, uh, water time, or ocean time to get to, the, to get to the war. And, you know, they put us, they put us on the target list. They put us in between them and the, and, the, and the war or the enemies, and we the ones that are gonna suffer. So, you know, I don't believe military should be here. 
I believe they should be gone. They should have been gone a long time. Growing up, we, when we graduated from Wayne High School, from high school, automatically our social security told us we had to go to Vietnam. We had no choice. We had no choice whether we wanted to or we didn't. The minute that social security card came, you was 180, you was gone. So I have no happy feelings or great feelings for the military. I believe that they should be gone, and they should be gone yesterday, not today. Thank you. One twenty-eight. Okay, one twenty-nine. Oh, oh one twenty-eight coming. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Aloha, my kako. Aloha. My name is Kaliko Puanohe Okalani Ayu. Um, I learned. I was privileged. I am privileged to learn from Uncle Sparky that the Kahuli snail only sings when the Aina is happy. Um, Generations currently and past have yet to hear the Kahuli snail sing its song. Um, after visiting Makua, I got inspired to write a, a short song. I'm just going to share a little bit of it. Kissed away a clearing on my tongue. Shelby, billionaire. I'm actually an Air Force veteran. I used to work at J6 Paycom. So we used to do Bitcoin and crypto before that stuff even existed. So we know exactly how much Paycom is important. Now it's Indo-Pacific man. Obama took over. Joe Biden has dementia. So I'm going to make sure to send this to your boss in POTUS because obviously he has to prove the budget. And I would like you guys to pay proper lease rent. Obviously a dollar is a joke. That's just a contract you guys did to make the lease seem like it's valid, but it's fraud. And you know, state of Hawaii was made in 1959. State of Israel is 1948. We can look at everything at hawaiiankingdom.org. And luckily, if you forget everything, I already put it in the comments. You can write it down, hawaiiankingdom.org. Because as veterans, we're supposed to protect the US Constitution for threats foreign and domestic. We have domestic threats, Colonel. 
And we have people we call the Illuminati, the Rothschilds, the Bilderbergs, the Warburgs, Astor. It's all on the CIA website of people who's actually controlling the money, selling the bullets to you guys, all those expensive ships we used to use to supply the war. Now, we, have, we know you're going to war with Korea, North Korea, China, they want to hit Taiwan, and everything's going to go to the world shit because they're going to split the U.S. forces on Israel, Ukraine. We know Joe Biden helped to overthrow that with the coup, which is the CIA again. They're called the Jackals. They go to overthrow the government. If they don't take the bribe, they use this four rice farmer from the CIA. You can contact them. R-I-C-E, rice. Rewards, incentives, coercion, and ego. That's how they overturn these governments. Cuba, you've already seen the Gary Webb's movie, Kill the Messenger, where he discovered the CIA was smuggling the drugs, the cocaine, everything through Contra, through these wars. So I don't want us to get stuck in stupid wars where you send us veterans back out to war and we survive. We don't have PTSD, we have current traumatic stress disorder. It's still going on because they lied to me, they lied to Keanu Sai when he was the Army Battalion officer. He wrote all this stuff. It's on YouTube, it's on everything. So I'd like you guys to figure something out. Definitely pay reparations. And I actually adopted the highway on Mount Akea. So you see the Hawaii Cyber Alliance Club because we have liability insurance. So I love to see the Army actually help me pick up the trash that's there on there. And we also have a lot of pickup and cleanups we can do on the beach. I believe I contacted your officers in the Nanakuli and Waianae board to do something 90s days out, maybe third week of September. We want to coordinate with the Waianae and Nanakuli board to do something as a joint force so you guys can get some brownie points. But we'd love to actually do some real physical work and not voila out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 1.30. And if you would like to testify, please do get a number because I think everybody will just have, we'll just have time for everybody to go once. 30. <laughs> Hello, my name is Bernadette. Hello. And five minutes before this meeting starts, that's how I found out that I was having this meeting. Yeah? I'm real. I'm descendant of Heleni, Nae Nae, and Kaua Kahi. My great, 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 great grandparents stay buried in that little piece of graveyard over there. And I can't even access them. You know what is sad? That half of you guys in this room, maybe all of you guys, went up that valley before me. I never even get to see inside there. Only for the road. Which is, um, I can't even talk right now. So, man. I wasn't. I not. I wasn't. I never have one choice growing up. My generation, we got stuff with everything. Everything we got stuff with. We got locked out of our own little, our language. We got locked out of going to school. Yeah? Come here, me. How many guys are there? Come here, I'm school. Yeah, look. One person in this room. Wait, come here, I'm at school. From this side of the island. That sucks. No, for real. And then for find out, five minutes before the meeting start, that, yeah, one meeting like this. Eyes left in a fucking dark. Talk about cut off the head. Hey. I'm a fisherman too. Give my family back their land, because we're not going to let you guys rent one dollar a year. Rent me one house for one dollar a year, because I live on a fucking beach. Yeah? yeah? How about that? How about my son like live in his house too for one dollar a year? And he get cocoa blood for two sides of his family. Yeah? His last name, Mahuka. That's where my baby come from. My kids get cocoa blood. Give us back our land, because we're not going to let you guys rent anymore. That's my tutu was born in that valley. For you guys desecrate like that. When my grandparents is right there in that graveyard, that I cannot leave in access, because it's freaking locked. Huh? Growing up, I was talking to my classmate, yeah? Growing up, we heard the bombs. Try sleep, gotta go to school the next morning with bombing coming over that mountain. Wake up, walk to school, ashes falling on your head. Yeah? That's the kind of shit we remember. You guys didn't stop bombing way long time ago, what? 21 years ago? Should have been before that. You guys should have been out of there a long time ago. Clean up the land. No, yeah, no, cousin said it. We go clean up the land. Because that's our kuleana. Yeah, for maintain, perpetuate, carry on, teach.
the younger generations will do. I am just so grateful that my tutu, my tutu lady will teach me what I know today. My tutu man will teach me what I know today. And that shit can be learned from a book. None of that can be learned from a book. But today you can go back to school, you can learn. Because two semesters ago I found out about this damn lease and I was not happy. Let them speak away in here. But anyway, I am not in agreement for your ordinance. And I would like to know how long this damn thing was out, because it says from June something to something, something, something on a piece of paper that we have uh, two turns of comments. This is my comment. No, we're not letting you lease any more land. <laughs> Mahalo. Mahalo, man. Number one, thank you. Oh, I'm gonna try to keep this brief because uh, I'm from Makiki and I want white night folks to have you know their time. But um, it's awesome to see all these great Kanaka and other land and water protectors here. But I, we we kind of all know that this process isn't for the people. <laughs> it's not for us. It's a box check for you guys. You just you know you, you add notes to your grocery list. You you nod in an imitation of empathy and you, you say your canned statements that you learned in your PR training courses and you say like, we see you, we hear you, we feel your pain and we're gonna do whatever the hell we want anyway. I mean like, we learned this from Red Hill, you know, all the meetings, all the public comments. These are, this is not the draft EIS, this is the public comments for just the scoping hearing. And we have till August 7th to submit comments for the draft EIS. But all of this is just a waste of paper, yeah? Like, you're gonna do what you're gonna do. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of good that we're all here, but we know that this is theater. We know that this is a farce because you have another goal, right? You know, the US military says you're, you're here to protect us, but it's like, protect us from what? Protect us from whom? What have, what have will any other country due to Hawaii that the US military hasn't already done. What's China gonna do? Contaminate our sole source aquifer? What's Russia gonna do? Steal Makua and then bomb it and contaminate it with white phosphorus and lead and depleted uranium? <laughs> like, th there is nothing that any other country could do or even wants to do to Hawaii that you haven't already done. And you're gonna continue to do it. And this process, we all know is bullshit. We know where this is gonna get settled. Uh, it's gonna get settled on the streets, so we'll see you in the streets. We'll see you in front of the gates of all the lands that you've stolen. And the leases today, and the leases yesterday, not 2029. Hoi hoi makua, aloha Number 132. 132. Okay. Lee. Aloha mai kako. Aloha. I am born and raised from Oahu, Kalihi Palama. Um, both my parents are Hawaiian by blood, even my two grandmothers. But I was a Navy wife for 17 years until my husband retired just one month shy before we, the Hawaii military commu community, found out our frickin' Navy lied to us, covered it up for us. That's why my youngest son was sick since we moved back home and we're living Pearl City Peninsula for nine years to today. Anyways, that's not what here I'm to talk about. Sir, Colonel, where the hell is Pentagon? Because as far as I know, attending majority of our Navy Red Hill, Pentagon military executive officials and their staff have been coming here to Oahu but I know they're not gonna do shit because they're brainwashed too. What fuels me is that yes, I was poisoned, my family was poisoned, my home island, Oahu was poisoned, all our drinking water is poisoned, and our state wants to go ahead and allow you folks to get the land titles bullshit. I don't trust our Department of Defense no more, I don't trust our military no more, and as far as I know, a lot of your soldiers, sir, when I was just an island girl growing up on this island during the old school era of 1990s, 
I remember my homies at Schofield was the ones that taught me about our endangered native snails. And I was brainwashed. I was Americanized growing up here, just like many Hawaiians here on this island. Even though I went to Catholic schools, we were still brainwashed. And I just want to tell you, they were the ones that started to wake me up slowly about Makua Valley and about the bombing of Pohakuloa and Kahuku. They were pissed. They're like, how come you Hawaiian girl, you local girl, you don't know this shit? I'm like, no. We were taught that we lavishly took America for Hawaii. That's what we were taught in school and by our elders. So anyways, in 2002, I attended a Hawaiian technology business school in my mid-20s under OHA. We went to field trip at the Nanukuli Ka'ala Farms. And Uncle Butch was our host. And I remember, I was sitting there, I heard booms. It sounded like a war going on. It sounded, it sounded like a war, it sounded like fireworks. I was like, what is that? They said, that's Makua Valley being bombed. So this was the start of me learning to be decolonized slowly. That was 2002. I became a Navy white by late 2004, early 2005. We moved to Yokosuka Navy Base, Japan by 2005. I was so homesick. And this is what a lot of our born and raised Hawaiians and born and raised locals have to understand when they move away from Hawaii. They have to learn that when you become homesick, it's actually our kupuna, our ancestors, keakua, trying to tell us, hey, you need to wake up. It's time to start fighting and speaking up for our home islands. And that's what I started to do in Japan by 2006. I wasn't brainwashed to just become a Navy wife and be lavished by you all and be lavished by our senior leaderships, seeing them brainwash us too. I was meant to learn the Navy politics, learn to have trust with our military community, and then learn the proper Hawaiian history to mend my homesickness and fight with the indigenous people of Japan and those in Okinawa and the people of Japan that wanted you all out. You, that's your guys' host nation, Japan. They don't like you guys there. A lot of them don't like the gaijins there. And it hurts me as a Hawaiian because I know the Japanese people loves Hawaiians. And then we come back home after San Diego, after Japan, San Diego, and I'm sorry, here. Can you I'm sorry, I'm okay. gonna wrap it up. Thank you. 2015, we come back home. Oh. Sir, this is what I really need to tell you. I know you're just a colonel, which is equivalent to a captain in our Navy, but I need you to go up the chain of command and speak for your army, because I told this to Vice Admiral John Wade, and Barnett, commander for Navy Region Hawaii and Pearl Harbor, back in January 2023. This shit was pissed. I was pissed. I was holding this in my fucking heart since 2015. Come home, I accompanied my, by then, back then, active duty Navy husband, he's retired now, and we went to the in-dock briefing to welcome hundreds of Navy sailors on sub side of Pearl Harbor. I was on a sideline. And this one woman from MFSC, Military Family Support Center, behind Ruby Tuesday's Moana Lua Shopping Center, <laughs> she tried to introduce Hawaii to all the room full of sailors and say, stay away from all the Hawaiians, stay away from all the locals, because they're angry at the monorail, they cause all this, um, they cause all that road rage, and the Hawaiians don't like Americans, so they're equivalent to terrorists. How do you think I felt about that bullshit? But you know what, since the 1990s, I've been hearing from your soldiers, sir. You guys been saying that bullshit on Schofield too. Brainwashing your own soldiers to fear our own people, born and raised from Hawaii. I did not become a Navy wife and then have my husband retired to just go ahead and continue being brainwashed as an American. Fuck no. I listen to my kupunas, I listen to my dreams in my sleep. Mm -hmm. Queen Liuokalani came to my dreams too, to tell me I'm going to be the voice one day while we were in Japan. 
Japan stationed there. And then Boom Kanani, Governor Linda Lingo, Governor Linda Lingo and Representative John Ward, Jake, Jean Ward, came 2007 to our Yokosuka Navy base, Japan, and asked for more military to come to Oahu. I was asked 24 hours prior to that, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. <laughs> I was asked 24 hours prior to be the mistress of ceremony by a senior leadership that is an admiral, the commander of Yokosuka Navy Base Japan in 2007. I changed my freaking script at the closing remarks. I did not like what Governor Linda Lingo, our Hawaii governor, said to our Navy and the Japanese Navy that she wants more military, more Navy, more Navy ships to come here. So I stood there and I told her, I changed the whole script. I thought I was gonna get kicked out. Nope, I was invited again in the future. But anyways, I said, you're not gonna do that to my home, Oahu. We don't need no more traffic. We don't need no more populations and we do not need no more disrespect of our military because I've seen it on your guys' host nation of Japan. I've seen it in Okinawa and I've seen it growing up on this island. You know a lot of your soldiers, just like a lot of our sailors, disrespect this island. Even the military families. They don't know how to take care of this island. And that is what your soldiers told me, sir. In 1990s to early 2000s, even when I was working at a no longer existent nightclub in early 2000s. I'm sorry, can you please? I'm, I'm about to wrap it up. And they, all, they were all my customers who all came back with PTSD from Afghanistan war and Iraq in 2005. But anyways, they're the ones that told me. They don't understand why, why the US government, why our Department of Defense has so much clutch hold and lands of our Hawaiian people that got forcefully evicted, even where I live, Pearl City Peninsula Navy Housing, formerly called Manana. I take care, and I'm very territorial, of that property for several years. I was given the green light by senior leaderships of Navy Region Hawaii. Sir, I'm, I'm dead serious. You need to start, you need to go up that chain of command, and you tell even that woman back there that was sitting back there, the short, block, the short hair. She was at the BLNR the last time back in May. She told our state, that even if you folks land title this lands, you guys are not going to real estate. That is some bullshit. Because I know for a fact, my housing landlords for Navy housing, real estate, actually it's the US government. They actually real estating those lands. And there is so much open lands, free lands, all over Pearl City Peninsula, all over all your military housing, 13 Navy housing neighborhoods, two Army housing neighborhoods, Hickam, Joint Base Pearl Harbor, many Navy bases, even the Army bases. You guys have too much freaking land, open, unused. For what? For you guys' entertainment? For your family members to come and lavish like tourists? That's fucking unfair, sir. My heart was broken moving back home in August 2015 to see that we have so many of our native Hawaiians moving. There's more Hawaiians living on the continental United States, which is Turtle Island. I'm sorry. And we have many born and raised locals. I am on the brink of being a houseless. No disrespect to my husband. We're gonna be at peace. But we're about to be divorced. We are one of the many retired military families that are about to be divorced. And I am scared. I have never, I've sacrificed myself as a military wife for 17 fucking years to go ahead and take care of my kids, be a homemaker to my sons, dance hula the proper way, not the tourist way, to teach the Hawaiian history to the peop, to the military community. That's what I did, dancing hula. I'm sorry, I really and need to do I'm sorry, I know I'm gonna wrap it, I promise you, after this. And so, <sighs> it just breaks my heart, all right? Coming back home, I woke up. I'm not an American no more. I'm decolonized, sir. No one taught me that. I did that on my own, being homesickness. But coming back home to my own Keiki Oka Aina, child of the land, it hurts me that a lot of my blood, my, our Hawaiian people, 
and are born and raised locals. Just like me, I'm about to be houseless. Because why? I survived off of my husband. I'm only learning to be independent now. I'm scared, I can't even afford my home island anymore. But you guys have so much land, and you guys are being greedy like your forefathers in 1800s, asking for more land. Just I'm like sorry. how you guys evicted our Hawaiian people and our born and raised local people off of Pearl City Peninsula, Pearl Harbor, and Hickam. Sis, I'm sorry. We, it's over 10 minutes. I, I got to, other people want to. Please hear my voice, sir. I speak as a prior Navy wife that was proud of our Navy, proud of our military before. Not no more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, we have a lot of people still wanting to testify, so please, please try to keep it to the two minutes. We were support. Well, I'm not going anywhere, but you know, okay. Um, One thirty-three, please. Oh, everybody, try to keep the swearing down, please. You don't need all this. You don't need to hear all this cussing. Swearing down. Hello, <laughs> my. Mahalo everyone for being here. Mom, that's my dad's best friend. You can understand what I am too, but you can understand me too. This is your turn. Okay. Speak. Mahalo everyone for being here. <coughs> Aloha mai. Um, I'm Katie. What is your name? Hi Steve. Um, I'm Katie. I'm a Makuahine. I'm a former teacher at Waianae High School. And I'm Kanaka Maori. And I'm here on behalf of my son, Trayton, who's speaking after, and my daughter, Makali'i. Can you please say her name? Makali'i. Makali'i. Okay, say it one more time. Makali'i. Yep, Makali'i. Um, she's almost turning one on July 31st, which is La Ho'i Ho'i Ea. Are you familiar with that day, sir? A little bit. Can you share what you know about that day? Okay. This is your statement. Thank you. Um, well, it is the day of sovereignty restoration here in Hawaii. And I think we've heard a lot about your draft. And I think it's easy to create a report in isolation of the military's perspective and what your desire is. And ultimately, the benefits of your $1 lease over the last 65 years. Um, but I want you to look at my daughter and remember her name, especially if you write it down. It's Makali'i, M-A-K-A-L-I, Okina I. Are you familiar with the Mo'olalo or story of Makali'i? Yeah. So Makali'i is a constellation. It's also known as Pleiades. And when Makali'i rises, it is the start of Makahiki season. And typically that's in November through around March. It's known as the rainy season. It's when we have rest, restoration, fertility, harvest. It is also a time of peace, which means that there is no war. <clears throat> so when your one daughter lease ends in 2029, Makali'i will be five years old. And I want Makali'i's lifetime to be a time of peace in her own aina. And I want you to understand what a renewed lease means for Makali'i and for my son, Triton, and all the kiki we are here representing. It means a loss of aina. It means a loss of our connection to our aina. It means a loss of connection to our waters, to our plants, to our birds, to our culture, to our fish, white anai, anai, the fish that we don't see anymore. It's continued loss for us, and it's continued mistrust between us as Kanaka and you as Haole, Western American. I've heard a lot of people say that you are just a colonel. You are not just. You are here, and you have kuleana, and you have responsibility to make right what your ancestors have done to us and to our land. Pledge of Allegiance says justice for all. Is that true or is that just justice for you? Remember my daughter, remember Makali'i, remember my son, remember what you will be taking from my kids, 
stealing from my kids. You weren't here 70 years ago when the army got all of this for one dollar. More aina than we as Kanaka have access to on Hawaiian homestead. But what is on you, Steve, is the opportunity you have to make pono, restore what's right, and give us back our aina. Not so that we can own, but so that we can restore and so that we can protect as kiai and as stewards of this aina. Mahalo. Mahalo. 134. 134 with your son. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kina Kalei Lee Pali I was born on the, the red side, on the Wainai side, from Nanakuri to Wainai. You have to remember the pain that we feel. It's not only in this room. It's all over. And what I mean by all over, in the continent, we have family that want movies. They think it's cheaper. And it's not. All we had from you folks was broken promises. I promise we're going to provide this. I promise we're going to provide that. Broken promises. OK? When you folks first came, 604, you folks dug up EVs from the rest camp. Transfer one section at Makua side. You guys dug up. You guys turn around for burial inside, dig up more EVs. Okay? And then you guys turn around and dump them at the army yard. It's at Makua. All right. They put it there. How would you like I go there and dig up your loved ones and treat them like opala? They are not rubbish. They are ancestors. They are spiritual healer to all of us. They are our spiritual leader. You folks destroy them, but they leave on within us because the spirit with the blessing of Keakua, it will always live within our hearts. We're not going to stop. All I'm going to say is, your Opala, your broken promises, you, we could never clean that land the way it's supposed to be. Because my brother had turned around during a high wave. He got the back part of torpedoes that came up on Makua side. He used it, he struck, he dragged it up. I still got it. And people think, oh, how did we get a land at Kehau? Let me tell you, I have to buy that land. My ancestors, my family land back. I did not inherit. It was stripped that I brought that land back. Right. The majority of Makua side is all real estate owned. They're not from here. <clears throat> this connect all it, work her call it off with my husband's help to buy a piece of my land back with my family name. So what I'm asking you, sir, you know, you're the messenger. It takes a lot of the messenger. Stop the broken promises. Shut you guys' doors. Clean it up because that land will never grow fruits or any type of food, food to feed what we need to feed. That land could never, but all we can do is grow primera flowers. Flowers that you folks know when you come into the airport, the fragrance. Because we could never, I would never allow any of this connect my olives to feed our own people. Poison lead. Poison. Decades and decades of poison. Why not stretch snot? How many years you guys been spray on that land? Our people did not know what that is. You folks been spraying that and coating that on that land for keep the dust down. It breaks up through the years. It goes in the ocean. And you wonder why people get sick and you wonder why we're angry. Do the right thing. You came enough. 
Aloha does not mean resilient. Aloha does not mean dumping. Aloha does not mean bumping. You bumming. Aloha does not mean any of that. We showed you many years of aloha. Where the hell is your aloha? Zero. Remember that. We are dried of aloha. So we need to heal ourselves to find back our final aloha again. And to do that, you folks, aloha no. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you. My question is tonight for you. Hawaii is at war with anybody? That would be the question. No. Hawaii is not at war with anybody, so why are we having the most training grounds for war? We never had or ever declared war with any other country or any other people. Why are we training to kill not only kill, but you guys steal. And of course, the famous one is destroy. So I say this, yeah? I am totally against this whole extended lease that the state do not even have permission from anybody here to lease any other land. They are supposed to be caretakers. They really caring for our land, yeah? Doing a great job, negative. They don't have the authority to be leasing land anymore to you guys. Whatever what happened back in the war days or whatever, us guys being frightened or whatever the situation, yeah, because the big boogeyman was gonna come attack us. Well, the boogeyman is no, no more. The military is the boogeyman, okay? The United States military is the biggest bully. They don't ask, they take. You just heard, I got educated tonight on my family from Maka and why not? I never know you go over there. Tell those guys, you guys get so many hours to get the property out of there. I know the Leo family, yeah, going forward. But going forward, I just, I understand that they, they sent you here. And as, I'll tell you this, as much as you're taking on this, and I respect them, you're going to this justice. The reason for the, the whole song and dance is that you guys can go back to the state and land use commission and all of these guys said, check the box. Negative. We don't want to extend the lease at Makua. And you guys need to know that. You guys need to be good stewards of the land like you guys said you guys are. And be gracious to the host family who is us and hosted you enough and leave. You know, I, I understand that they only sent you, for whatever reason, the rest of the people are probably cowards. Yeah, hiding behind one desk. But the bottom line is, we need to have better, not saying that you're not, better representation of the leaders. Because you know why I say this when, when it comes to military? By the time it gets to the ground up top, done. You're not going to hear none of this. None of this what you guys just heard. You know why that Wahini, when she went to Japan with her husband, and fell ill, again, sir, we're connected to the Aina. But she had to leave. That was the feeling she had. And every other Hawaiian that goes to the continent feels. You never have that feeling. Because I'll never go to your property or your state or your island where you stay and evict you guys. Whenever you can wrap it up, please. I get 10 more minutes. I was counting the other guys. <laughs> no, I'm just, just joking. But the bottom line is, as she said, I came here as, as Kurt Fivella, but I am a state senator, and I know you guys got my letters, because I am for no more lease extensions to none of the establishments that we have. I, I get one more before I leave. You can answer this or not. Do you know where Pearl Lagoon is? Do you know where Pearl Lagoon is? Where? Pearl Harbor. That was the most place that you could get food, everything. The Hawaiians was, was flourishing with these things. And guess what happened? They dredged it and made the tombstones for people. 
again, an act of war, finishing up on the Japan situation. Hawaii was never in war with Japan. America was. That's the reason why they had the respect not to kill everybody from Kole Kole Pass all the way to Pearl Harbor. Sad to say three ever residents did die, but they didn't intend to kill civilians. Just remember this, when we dropped the bomb, we intended to kill civilians. America, the biggest bully. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator. 136. Okay. Aloha, my name is Paris and this is Chance. We're proud to be from Waianae High School students. I'm here, me and some students have, me and the students here have had the opportunity and the privilege to go on a cultural access tour to Makua Valley which was a huge privilege because not a lot of people in our community get to experience what I was able to experience. Because the gates aren't open to its people. That experience has truly grounded us more into our community. We were born and raised here and we believe that we should, we should and need to have a voice in the decisions that affect our moku. Like moku is not a place for bombing, it's a place of healing. Come on now. Last week during cultural access to Makua, something resonated in us. How grateful we are for our kapuna for fighting for our lands. Now it's our turn to pick up the baton and continue the work that we were meant to do. During the cultural access, one of my kumu said something that motivated and inspired me. This isn't exact words, but it's still relevant. Right? How hard would you fight for your land if it was taken from you overnight? Also, mahalo nui for all the kumus, aunties, uncles, and all the cultural practitioners for all the work that they had to do for us to have access to these sacred places. Please, malamu makua, and return Hawaiian lands to Hawaiian hands. This is why we oppose the extension of military leases. Eola. <laughs> Hello, my name is Trayton. I'm the daughter of Katie and the brother of um, my sister, Makavi'i. I'm 14 years old and I go to Kamehameha School's Um I'm here because I used to go to public school and then I got into Kamehameha and I was educated on the way that my country was taken over and illegally basically put into a position where their culture should be forgotten. And the holiday that we all most recently, or you celebrated, uh, is July 4th. The American Revolution is your independence, which just, like, it's celebrating your independence with your fight against the British. But what about our fight against you? We, we lost our independence. We became the 50th state of America when there should only be 49, or really 13. So my only ask is that we're given a say into what happens with our land. Um, if you want it, in the rarest case scenario, you get it, you better get a ton load in return for everything that you took before and what you would take in the future, unless we take it back. Um, I just want to create a safe place for me to grow up and hopefully in the future, my keiki to grow up, where it's a safe community where we all can speak freely and have all the land that belongs to us. Sadly, that doesn't involve you. Um, I appreciate you being here and taking all of this, you know, say like words and negative energy that's coming towards you because I know it sucks, I'm in middle school. It's just, so. I appreciate you being here. It takes a lot of guts. 
Mahalo. I hope you take my testimony into account. Thank you. Mahalo. All right, Ifit. I'm Ifit. I'm from here. I'm from Makaha. Um, people have talked about becoming diaspora. I'm Chamorro and Haole. Um, my mother came here. I work for Oahu Army Natural Resource Program. Um, it's a part of the uh, uh, Department of Public Works Environmental. It, I don't represent them when I say this, but it's a sentiment that is shared among my coworkers. The U.S. Army is not conserving land effectively. <laughs> they are the single largest contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions, and I've watched flames consume Makua, consume Ohikiloro, below Ohikiloro, and into Keao, and, and I've known and I've seen the skeletons in Mahaleha, in Kalua Kawila, KTA, Kahuku Training Area, all of these native plants, native ecosystems, native histories, just decimated, decimated by military occupation. So I'm, I'm opposed to this EIS, the, the word environmental in, in EIS, it's ridiculous. The, the US military does not have any, any, any ability to say anything about environmental, <laughs> or what is environmentally good, what is environmentally friendly. And the, the offsetting programs that they have, like um, OANRP, bullshit, like genuinely. I, I'm, I'm so lucky, I've seen so many beautiful places, but it's, it's bullshit, genuine. Like this 2,000 page EIS, is that my time or is that halfway? No, 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 that's your time. Please. Oh, got it. Yeah, right so that's, that's the first part, and I'm opposed to America. I'm opposed to America, so I'm opposed to the EIS and I'm opposed to America. America is occupying so many places. Someone said it earlier, it is a global force. It is a force that carries out the whims and wills of the top, the elite. The, the wealthy, the owners, at the expense of everyone else. And everyone else is catching wind of it. In the Philippines, in Palestine, everywhere. Revolution is spreading and revolution is coming and it's coming for America's head. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, the little bell is the two minutes. I just, I'm nice. Just it again, so yeah, I'm gonna be in trouble later. It's okay. I'm happy to hear from all of you. Kyle, you need no introduction, but come on, Donna. Hello, Kako. Hello, Kako. Kyle Kajihiro from Mo'ili'ili. Dr. Kyle Kajihiro. I'm an assistant professor at Ethnic <laughs> Studies at UH uh, and also with Hawaii Peace and Justice. Um, shortly after Pearl Harbor, the U.S. military directed the ethnic cleansing of about 120,000 persons of Japanese ancestry from the west coast of North America, put them in concentration camps, about several dozen. It arrested about 2,000 persons of Japanese ancestry here in Hawaii. I recently uh, went to a Thule Lake pilgrimage. Thule Lake was the largest incarceration site. About 18,000 uh, persons of Japanese ancestry were uh, imprisoned there. It, at that time, it was the largest city in Northern California. And at this pilgrimage, the descendants, the survivors and descendants were sharing their stories. They were trying to heal from the intergenerational trauma of that experience of being ripped away from their homes, from their livelihoods, being treated as prisoners, and then just being set free, set loose. Shortly after Pearl Harbor happened, the US military imposed martial law in Hawaii and sees hundreds of thousands of acres of land, up to 645,000 acres at one point. So this is land that's held hostage. This is Aina that's held hostage. And this is a deficiency in the, in the EIS that it is treating it as a real estate action when really you should be analyzing the impacts on Aina, which is a living relationship. When you put fences and barbed wire and you separate people from their ancestral lands, You've created orphans from those lands. You've created a rift that needs time to heal. Today, the military controls about 225,000 acres of land. F about 40,000 acres are leased for a dollar. This is not just the Army, but Navy and Air Force as well. And what's perverse and cruel is that by leaving bombs and toxins in these lands, you've booby-trapped the body of the Aina so that 
people cannot even embrace their kupuna without being harmed. So the EIS is deficient also because it does not take into account all the testimony that you're hearing here today. This is evidence, and you really need to incorporate an ethnographic analysis of the kind of generational harm that is being expressed to you tonight. That is part of the testimony that has to be incorporated into the EIS. A point I want to make is that the lease is not renewable. It ends in 2029. And the, and the EIS has failed to analyze the, the instruments by which you propose to continue uh, retaining these lands. So you haven't an analyzed the executive order or a condemnation, which is basically both words for theft of land. What are the impacts of that? You have not incorporated that. So the Japanese Americans got a token apology and $20,000 is redress for their experiences during the war. Kanaka Maoli got a 1993 apology from the US government, but land was not returned. So it is time for you to return the lands that were taken wrongfully uh, to make good on that apology. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, wait, 140, 144. Oh, 140? I thought that was 149. Oh, sorry, 140. Hello, friend, it's been a minute. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. You know, it's not the easiest evening, but you know, you can do whatever you want. I mean, don't run off with it or anything. Aloha kaku, aloha I. Um, I want to first acknowledge uh, the people of Waianae and uh, your kupuna. Um, and I want to thank you all for being here. All that came before, uh, came a little bit late, and uh, that's why I'm 140. <laughs> but I, I really appreciate um, the mana. I appreciate your time. Because that's really what it's all about, right? It's about time. You know, what we do with our time, that's mana. Yeah, manava is time, manna, it's manna, yeah. So this time we're spending here, it's, it's critical. Now, not being part of this dog and pony show. Oh, I call him mine, I didn't even say, my name is, because I, I feel like I was kind of introduced. <laughs> call him mine for, if you don't know me, I'm Hanaloa, and, and I'm not from Waianae. I'm from the Pico of Oahu. Um, Waikatalaua is the name of the stream, right in between. Uh, Waihiwa and Bililani. And so I hear that bombing all the time. Your training area right there. School field's really close. Yeah, get the Wheeler Field close by, constantly. So we know there's a lot of capacity to do all the things you're saying you need to do in Makua. They already get places. I don't think you should train there either, but I feel like I feel like this whole process is a master class in gaslighting. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're talking about environmental, uh, you know, come on, environmental. Come on. I mean, we just need to look at Kaolave, right? Come on. Still not clean. Most of the island, the vast majority of the island, not clean. And I think we can use Kaolave as an example of what the military does because it's not just here in Hawaii it's all around the world so I think what's most important about this meeting is the time that we're given to it that we're here this is more about us you know uh, uh, an affirmation of of our duty our kuleana on our kue yeah, we are the descendants, the living descendants, yeah, of, of this land, yeah, our ancestors are this land, yeah, this is, our, the Kue petitions, that was one of the most profound acts of democracy in the history of humanity, the vast majority of Hawaii, including non-Hawaiians, signed those petitions, yeah, 
the two petitions, Hui Kalai Aina and the Hui Aloha Aina. So I stand before you today, not only as a military veteran, as an Air Force veteran, yes, I was completely brainwashed at one time, but I stand here as an Aloha Aina to carry on with my ancestors who signed those petitions. Yeah, then that's why you're here too. It's in your blood, it's in your heart, it's in your mind. Yeah, so this is not wasted time. This is hoike for us. For us to see each other. To know each other that we are aloha ainas. No matter what our differences are. Yeah, no matter what religions we may follow at this time. What our politics are. We're here today to protect aina. And to demand, to demand that the army make good on one of its words anyway. I mean, this land wasn't even supposed to come to 2029, right? It's time to release our parent, Makua. It's time to release. Let it go. Let it go. I fired training. How long? Been Pao. You guys don't need to be in Makua anymore. Yeah, that, that is low-hanging fruit. Low-hanging fruit. Come on. It's time. It's past time. And that's just the beginning. You know, we're, we're in 2024, and we're still acting like we're in medieval times, being ruled by feudal lords. But we are here still alive. We're still alive. We speak for our ancestors. And we speak for the future generations. Yeah, our mo'opuna. Yeah, and we speak for those who can't speak, who don't have a voice like the rocks and the trees and the streams and the Ivi Kupuna that has been desecrated. So it has to stop. It has to stop. So I know, I, I thank you guys for all your patience. I didn't even mean to speak this long um, because you know everybody who's here is retired and we've been doing this, but you know what? An important recommendation going forward why not community? Should it be one day for this kind? Yeah, shouldn't be two minutes for people to speak. And then people get flushed and you know, they feel, oh, stress, we got the alarm going off. That's not porno. This is our time. We're spending part of our life being here. We should have that time. Puna should have that time. Keikis, all of us. So it should be several days, as long as it takes if this is a real process. But we know it's not, like many have said, it's a dog and pony show. So we are here to kako each other, to love each other. And so please take this message back to the Pentagon where the decision will be made. Well, okay, that's kind of naive. Take it to the Pentagon who will carry the message to the feudal lords, the billionaires, right? They're the ones really making the decisions here. Come on, we're seeing that in real time, more than ever. So please deliver that message and aole to release renewal. Yeah, aole. Mahalo. Mahalo, thank you. Sorry, I have to use the other one. 141, please. Cut, cut. <laughs> My check. Okay. So my name is Emily Kandagawa. I'm here as a Kia'i to Malamuaku and I wrote my stuff down so I can be on time, I hope. So for the record, I am here to testify in total opposition to any renewal of US Army leases. The common refrain in this effort to irresponsibly secure lease renewals is that you folks want to be better neighbors. If the United States were serious about that, you'd be looking back to 1849 and those precious few years that you bothered to honor our own treaties, your own treaties with the Hawaiian Kingdom. We're all here because we love something, bone deep. So my question is, what do you love? What do you worship that would require you to commit genocide and rationalize destruction of life itself on every continent for hundreds of years? What is your reward for abandoning your reason and your humanity? 
We know that this is for show for the US military, for the fake state, like every other public comment opportunity for every lease, for every proposed project. So I ask, where is your respect for the people? Where is your respect for Hawaiians? Beyond rhetoric, beyond pleasantries and checking boxes, the United States of America is having an identity crisis as the influence of your brutal empire dwindles. America is spiraling, trying to manage appearances because your national narrative of exceptionalism is struggling to match up with our lived reality of the heva on the ground, from Palestine to Congo to Puerto Rico to Hawaii. You folks are dealing with a community who knows who we are, who knows Hawaiian history, who knows world history, knows American history better than most of you. And we were all tested under the model of Mauna Kea, and we have been grounded in ceremony. The people do not consent to suffer these indignities for another 65 years of unmitigated poisoning and desecration, let alone another 131 years of illegal US occupation. You will meet a level of resistance that all your readiness exercises could never prepare you for. Mm -hmm. Because the US empire doesn't want you to give in to aloha, a resistance movement that actually invites you to reconnect with your humanity. It may be dangerous, but it's fun <laughs> to take your humanity back from the empire you were coerced into serving, the empire that threatens to withhold medical care, housing, food, and shelter from you if you disobey. So please use this opportunity to become the conscientious objectors that we know you can be. Refuse to be complicit. Help lead these fascists that you serve down the dignified path of deoccupation, clean up, and ultimately a treaty of peace between our two nations. Mahalo. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Aloha, everyone. Um, I have a whole list of things here that I wanted to talk about tonight, but I'm going to put it aside. And I'm going to um, acknowledge this very beautiful woman that came in and spoke about her life. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I was there. Not where you were, but before. Okay? My Lai Massacre started in March of 1968. May 13, 1968, a lot of our husbands was activated. A lot of us wives would go to the airport and we'd say goodbye to our husbands. And a lot of the wives would return to the airport and see their husbands coming home in a box. So that was my life back then. That was our life back then as a wife. So I want to say thank you so much for sharing your experience, okay? I want you to know, all, us de all of us are divorced. So, make your life happy. <laughs> yes, make your life happy. You can. Yes. Yes, and the other thing that I would like to acknowledge you, which was shocking, is Indonesia. So Linda sold Hawaii for $35 million to Indonesia. This is Wainai, people. This is Wainai. What does Indonesia got to do with Wainai? Let me tell you, a lot. Okay? By the way, I just want to acknowledge that Thaddeus Davis here was here three times, three meetings from the Pentagon. I have a docket. I've been to court with Thaddeus Davis. So I just want to, that's what I was going to talk about tonight. But I want to continue on and talk about Linda. What happened here is John um, Shucks, senior moment here. He tried to he tried to stop her from selling, okay? Everybody know here we had fest pack, right? Okay, Maluku is a nation that was not acknowledged, was not on the, 
on the list. But guess what? They were here. The question that they questioned me about was Indonesia. And I went, what? Because they have, their lives is just tormented by Indonesia. So I said, you know what? You like to learn about Indonesia, come out to Wainai. I'll show you where Indonesia is, okay? Indonesia is in Nanakuli. How did, what are they doing in Nanakuli? Oh, Hawaii architect. I took the Maluku women to the graveyard. I said, this is Nanakuli graveyard and Hawaii architect used the drones. What did they use the drones for? They use the drones so that they can own the graves, they can own the genealogy. That's what they did in Nanakuli. And then I took them to my Hawaiian homestead. Auntie, I need you to wrap it up. No, I took them to my Hawaiian homestead up here in Waianae Valley. And I told them, look at, this, look at the sign here. It says G70, Indonesia. Okay, you see those posters they're taking down? G70 is on the poster. So what do you think is going to happen to Waianae or Makua? What do you think is going to happen to us? How about Shermanad, University of Hawaii? How are they connected to Shermanad, University of Hawaii? We need to look deeper. And I don't know how to do that. I was talking to someone out there, and what they told me is, I know a lot and all this stuff that I do, but I need to bring it down so that all of you understand what I'm talking about. People, you need to rise, okay? Tonight we need to rise. And we need to take a look at what this beautiful woman said tonight. So again, I have a whole list of things that I wanted to talk about, especially about Thaddeus Davis and being in court with him. Thaddeus Davis from Pentagon, I have a docket. I was in court with him, with uh, Judge Beretta and Judge um, Kennedy, Atomic Energy. So um, I didn't do too well because we are all downwinders and that is the case. I, I, I don't know how to bring it down to your, to bring it down so that you can all understand me. The only time that Schofield bomb Auntie, on the other it. side is when the wind is blowing this way, okay? Is when the wind is blowing this way. And they do it a lot, all night long. The other thing too here is Thaddeus Davis did a buffer zone, a three mile buffer zone from Kole Kole Pass. I don't know how to get you to understand that Maili, Maili has the highest rate of cancer among our children. I don't know how. I don't know how to bring the details forward. So, what are you all doing here tonight? You need to rethink about that buffer zone that Thaddeus Davis did while he was here. Thank you. It gives him the right to bomb. We are downwinders, and it needs to stop. Secondly, 900 tons of nuclear debris from, from different, from different in 2009 and 2010, he's writing, 900 tons was trucked over to Makua. What they did with that 900,000 people, they made two fire lanes because that meets the NRC. They made two fire lanes from Makua to Makai. So all the 900 tons debris is underneath the fire lane. And that meets the NRC rules. So, um, again, what Thaddeus Davis was doing here is they cleaned up, they cleaned up 
253 acres of the of the bombs that was that was dumped after World War II off our shorelines. Only 253 acres they cleaned up, and now they're they're clean. There's thousands of bombs out there on our shoreline. Depleted uranium is up on my Ely shorelines. Mm -hmm. Depleted uranium, where our children swim, is all up along the shoreline of my Ely. And it's, it's documented and researched. It's there, in fact, on record. Thank you, Andy. OK. So I'm going to stop here. There's more to say. Um, I just want you to know there's more of thank you again for sharing. Because I, I, I was like taken by what you had said. I just want to back you up on, on the evidence. 35 buildings. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. 143, please do, if you want to speak, we're only going to be able to go to people who pull tickets. So um, we were supposed to be out of here a while ago, but I'm here, you guys are here, so we're in it. 143. OK. Um, I just want to speak as a resident of Oahu, born and raised. I am not Kanaka Maui, not one. And yet I've been told the proper context about the history of Hawaii, of how she was forcefully stolen from her people, by a literal 1% bourgeois at gunpoint of how her people were violently forced off of their land, their language and culture violently suppressed, of how their land was ever since used and abused for weapons testing, extraction, and profit. And your country was the one behind all that. So it continues. Your bombing hasn't stopped, your exercises have not stopped, one of your facilities have contaminated a whole aquifer with fuel, and probably soon PFAS, and the state that you walk hand in hand with has done nothing to prevent the sale of our housing to investors, to the wealthy, allows water diversions for corporations, and makes the people of Hawaii poor, houseless, and leaving. Almost like it wants that to happen. I don't know. So again, even just as a resident, I say, no action. Land should be given back to the people of Hawaii, period. I have nothing against you specifically, I hope. If you decide to understand and if you decide to follow directions, I have nothing against veterans, specifically, if they decide to understand and also follow directions. But your institution, however, has overstepped its bounds here and across the world. I see what your country is instigating, and I see who your country is slaughtering. This will not end until it is made right. Mahalo, thank you very much. 144. Aloha, kehao, mahalo for coming to our Wainai community. As many of us are already woke, we know that we're just going through a farce process. But in this process, let us educate you in what we have learned. Most recently, in 2014, when the Department of the Interior came down to Hawaii to speak to the Kanaka, to speak to the people of Hawaii, we told them, we don't want to speak to you because our kingdom continues to exist despite, despite all the lies that America, this fake state, and all the governments that were too afraid to stand up to America back in 1893 to this day. But we Kanaka Maoli, we are teaching our children, our mo'opuna, our history, we have pride because we are so proud that our kupuna survived the travels to these islands that Keokua himself put us on because it is our kuleana to malama this land. 
and what the Army of the United States of America and all of the other armed forces continue to do is to kill, massacre, destroy. And if this is not on you, Colonel, this is on those powers that be, like all of those men that say, yes, let's go into a conflict. Yes, let's have war. If only they sent five people from their personal family, maybe they would not be so quick to say yes. Maybe they would be more open to negotiations because Hawaii is aloha and aloha is not weakness, but it is the ability to communicate from our heart, from our na'au, what Keakua has given to us. He has put us here to protect these islands and all the people that come here, like our kings and our queen. We knew that that was just another form of American slavery, plantations. That's what it was. But we here of Hawaii, we know that we are all equal. Keokua brought us here. And we have to find our place with each other to make it work. But the Hawaiian system was not an easy system. You messed up. The people will take you out. The American system, if you have money, if you have power, it doesn't matter what you do, because look at what that other guy has done, 34 convictions, and yet there's a Supreme Court that says a president has a protection. Immunity. But that's not for all the people. That's only for certain people. And our history, we did have those certain people because they knew how to treat us. They knew how to malama us and take care of us. And it's from the top down that we are the way that we are today. Despite all of the heaven, despite the genocide, all the illnesses, all of the atrocities that have been put upon our people and our land. It is not a coincidence that Hawaii is known as the extinction capital of the world. It is because of foreigners, foreign species, coming here and not recognizing the value of what Keakua put in the middle of the largest ocean on this planet. It is not our intent to destroy, to overcome, to conquer. It is our intent to exist as one with our akua, with our deans, with each other. And that does not mean that we do not have discord. Of course we do. But one fallacy, our people, is don't let them try to tell us that we have to be one. Ah, ole. We do not have to be one. We just have to rise up. We have to rise up. So regarding this EIS, there is nothing environmentally sound, as so many people have shared. I oppose the options, the alternatives that that report provides us. But we don't have to stick to that report. Like William has said, we want the alternative of no. No. A ole to the American military destroying our lands. And although other people have been generous to say that we will clean it, we'll clean it with the American dollars. And it won't be no 400 million, we are talking in the billions, just like Lahaina, just like what RIMPAC is doing to our ocean, to our animals, and here in this hub. So, mahalo ke hao, mahalo for your mahalo. patience, mahalo. <laughs> Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. 145, please.
I might call call uh, for Captain uh -huh. Lanier's call you know on the wine night my owl. Mahalo la hui. William Ayla. Amazing to see you here. I've seen you inside when I was against you on one side. I look at this room, I see plenty of people aged in this room doing the same meetings. Yeah. Every year we sit inside this dog and pony show thinking you guys taking your guys' notes, but when you guys walk out the door, it goes right into Opala. We know this. Kapukaki Red Hill is an example of what happened just recently. We talk about Maku in the past. Let's talk about now. I live in Maili, bombing every day and night. Why not Uka? Disgusting. You guys, choppers flying over, making so much noise, 11 o'clock at night, for our Kiki trying to rest, for our Kapuna trying to rest. You guys have no care. Can you answer me, what, have, what good have you guys done to Hawaii? I can wait. 131 years we've been waiting, and nothing has come good from you people. Not only here in Hawaii, nay, across the globe. You guys are a problem more than a solution. You guys cause pain to people like myself because it's been going on through our ancestors for years. You look in this room, my dad's best friend, Uncle Rocky right here, has been aging through this fight. He's a veteran, just like my dad. So it's not against you as a, as a soldier, sir. It's what you represent on that right arm that I burn on July 4th every year. That's my fireworks, yeah? Because I don't ever take pride in that red, white, and blue doo-doo of a toilet paper flag that you raise up high. I burn it in significance of what you guys done to us. We shouldn't have to come here and only speak two minutes because it's not enough time. She's writing a quick petition on her. That speaks loud and clear of what you guys have done and the way you guys don't listen to the people. Enough is enough. This fight don't stop here. 2029, we change the locks on those gates. We put our own. We fight the battle against you. You guys get guns? Fine. Let's fight. We can do our own. I do MMA shows in Hawaii, like up in the ring, sir. I'm down for you. You might wait. You know? I'm tired of this talking, that's why. We need action. We need to do what other countries are doing too. And if you guys want that, we here and we ready. But the best thing you guys can do is pack up and go. Don't take nothing with you because it's not yours. It's ours. You steal from us, we steal it right back. I'm tired of being nice in these little fucking meetings and looking like a fucking joke. That's why I said, no, no disrespect with these words, but we fucking tired. Yeah? We stay outside 10 days on a hulu at the core in front of you guys' place. You guys drive back and forth like nothing. Poisoning all of our water, poisoning of your own, killing of your own people, and nothing. Same thing you guys did in Camp Lejeune, same thing you guys doing in Palestine, everywhere, and nothing. Look at me, yeah? You feel it. I feel it every day when I wake up and I see the same shit you guys do to everywhere else, especially in our home of Hawaii. Why we gotta get water purification systems? Because of you. Why we gotta be on a house on, on the beach? Because of you. Yeah, and this American government that helps them, that guides them, and these politicians that come in and make like they fall the people, but they not. They drunk. <laughs> That's the joke about this fucking system. Is that you guys control them like puppets. While we're over here thinking, yeah, we're gonna have change, Kanaka. We're gonna go 20,000 walking from Alamara to Kapilani. We're gonna stop this ever. And then what? Our own joining you side by side. Yeah, signing paper. Making sure that their money and their bank account established. While we continue to be displaced in our own home. How would you like it if I go to Punchbowl, take an excavator and start digging? Because that's what you guys do to us. It should be fight back, fight back, eye for an eye in my way. That's what we should do. 2029, trust that. This lease continues. I will go back where I should be. I will yank out graves. I will do what I got to do for my ancestors as a descendant of hope. As a descendant of power. Enough is enough. No new leases. Go home. That's where you belong. You don't belong here. None of you. Mahalo. Okay? Mahalo. 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 Mahal
My name is Michelle Napuunoa. I am not from this part of the plant right now. And I wasn't gonna say anything. I just came to hold space for the people of this place. But as I listen, this is a lahui. This is a people's problem. Sir, you're a veteran, you're a colonel. You look like a lifer, so you're probably gonna be a general one day. And when you're that general, I want you to remember this day. Remember my kupunas talking to your kupunas. Take them with you. I'll let them go with you to wherever you need to go to talk to the higher ups, to talk to their kupunas, because they speak through me. I am of the fourth generation that is finally woke. And what does that mean? That means my great-grandfather was put into World War I. He was born into the kingdom of Hawaii. And his country was taken, and he was made a soldier. John Makahiko, Kipahudu Maui. He was made to fight your war, not ours. My grandfather, World War II, James Matsui, was a soldier fighting your war. Drafted. My dad, 80 years old, Buddy Napuunoa. Drafted again to fight your war. They are all occupied. They are Aina. Their minds were occupied by a pledge of allegiance to a country that was not ours. But I am taking a pledge to the Hai Hawaii, to our kingdom of Hawaii, to say that I am deoccupied Aina. This is Aina. When I walked in today as a guest, I saw blue and white police cars, um, some gentlemen with guns. Is this a welcome that you have to the people? You are the guest in this space. We didn't need blue lights. Those honorable blue and whites could have sat down and enjoyed themselves and learned a little. No one needed to stand at attention. We come with honors of prayer with aloha, with love. And now, all of these deoccupied minds come with education. My niece, God bless her, is an officer in the Air Force. She decides that she wants to crack the nut from the inside out. She wants to be a part of the solution together with the military, together. As a kanaka woman together, wearing the same soldier boots you have on, honoring her country, while honoring the high Hawaii. She walks every day in two worlds. As a kanaka maoli, as a proud, proud granddaughter of soldiers. And then she has to fight your war. This is a war of the mind that we are fighting here. Number one, everything we learned happened in kindergarten. Clean up what you would make messy. Take all of your things out of all of our aina. Clean it for the health and safety of whoever you leave behind, because I'm sure you're still going to have some people on some bases. Can you please wrap it up? Yes, I can. Thank you. What I'm asking from you is to hear, not with this, with this. Feel our pain. I don't know where your land of your kupuna is. One day go there and see the tragedy that I know is there. Because you are in the land of my kupuna where tragedy is living every day. Seeing those displaced Hawaiians when there is land to be lived upon. Sorry for the emotion and the tears. But I really appreciate you being here. You know why? Because our kupuna is going to talk it out. My kupuna is going with yours and you to wherever it is in the United States of America to make some decisions for peace, for our people, for what the queen said is love for our Hawaiian people. I'm here to represent my kupuna who came before me and my children and grandchildren that will come after me and hopefully in a place that is clean, better than what you found it as. Please, I implore you to not extend any leases. And if you do, a dollar, a dollar is not economical. 
How about a billion dollars? Let's try there. You're gonna stay here? Come on, pay for it. Just like Airbnb, pay for it. <laughs> Again, I appreciate your time. Thank you for everybody for being here. Thank you for letting me speak. Mahalo. Mahalo. 147, please. Aloha. My name is Kaulana Stanley, born and raised here in White I came late to the party, so I try not to take too much of everybody's time. Um, when I came here, I didn't really know what to really say because everybody else said it. But one thing I really want to say to you, sir, is that you get big kuleana, heavy, the responsibility that you have. Whatever you wrote in that book, whatever you listened to, whatever you heard, whatever you're going to take back, take it back. Share them. Let them know. That is your responsibility. That is your challenge. That is that spear I'm going to cast to you. And I'll let you catch them. I'll let you catch them. And I'll let you take that back and throw them into their faces. I'm a son of the Mua. My father, Pokiki, was here. And I asked him permission to share this creed with you. Because as a call, as a call to another call, Kuliana is of high, high standard, and we hold ourselves to it. So this is my commitment to not Akua, not all my Akua and my Pico. I am a man, a man without fear, a man without doubt, and a man without hesitation. Time will heal my pain. Pain is weakness leaving my body. I offer my body upon the altar of sacrifice to protect my nation and my people. I live to serve and I serve to live. Until my last breath, I'll defend my brother to my front, my brother to my back, my brother to my right, and my brother to my left. And together we will hold our ground and fiercely move forward because this is the way of the Mu'a. My actions reflect my ancestors and the queen. One day I'll earn my right to stand in the halls of my ancestors. Truth, justice, respect, Unity, loyalty, courage, excellence, compassion, humility, patience, and honor. This is the law of the Mu'a. Eku, eola, ako, aka niko o apalalo, hallelujah, maki o likolo, pupu e. Those words is what I was born into in the Mu'a. And I hold by that as a kiyami, as a protector, as a servant to my community. Another saying that I would love to leave with you. Ivi oku ivi. Koko oku koko. Pilikamo. I'll say it again. Ivi oku ivi. Koko oku koko. Pilikamo. My bones is your bones. My blood is your blood. Pili to the mo'o. Our mo'o is our mo'o kuau hao. The mo'o lelo that we share. Each and every person that came here, each and every person that is still here, come from a long line. Long line. Do your genealogy. Find out where you're from. Look back, if you haven't. Look how far your people came from. Because us sitting here, we know how far our people came from. And that's what we're fighting for. We're fighting for them. Because they sacrificed their time for us to be here. Thank you. Mahalo. 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 148. Belina mente aloha mai kako. O kale o kamai ko ui noa. O kaya uru ko umakani. O nene u ku kakai. O kane vai ku kavai, o ka ala ku mauna a o havai i ku home. I'm Kaleo Kamae, I'm from Wai Anai. Ka ala is my mauna, Kayaulu is my wind, kane vai is my stream, and Neneu is my beach, and Hawaii is my home. And I'm tired of my home, sick and tired of my home being desecrated at the hands of the military. Tired of it constantly being bombed, my water being poisoned. You folks paying $1 for land that my people cannot even access. 
I'm tired of the military gaining privileges that my people, that belong to Hawaiian people. I'm tired of you folks constantly de degrading our aina simply because Hawaii serves as a logistics link and allows for rapid troop deployment. Simply because Hawaii provides a range of training environments that cannot be repl replicated in other states. Simply because Hawaii co hosts the headquarters for the U.S. Pacific Army, Pacific Fleet, Marine Corps, Air Force, spe Special Operations. Why are you guys here in the first place? We've been telling you guys for generations, go home, clean up after yourselves. So I'm just gonna reiterate myself. I'm gonna stand my position and I'll do it today. I'll do it again tomorrow and however long it takes until you folks get the message and go. I oppose the renewing of the lease for the military and especially I oppose your folks' pres presence. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you. One forty nine. Everything okay? We're doing so well. It's just why nine. Okay. <laughs> One forty nine. What is on the side? Check out what's happening. Okay. One fifty. One fifty. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. Um, I actually didn't plan on speaking. I really came here to observe and take in information. My name is Mahie Mainalani. I am not from Wainai. My roots are in Maunawili. My family is from Waimanalo and Kohuku. I'm sure you're here for my family tomorrow night. Um, I work in property management and I found out about this meeting through social media on Hungry Hungry Hawaiian. So I want to echo what everybody else was saying. Obviously, I oppose the lease renewal that you guys are after. I really came here because I don't know what's going on. I feel like I represent the average Hawaiian that's not really in touch with Hawaiiana Kuliana, right? I don't really know too much about what's going on in the community. My family just moved to Hawaiian a couple years ago. Um, I work with Kupuna. I have over 200 tenants on this Wainai Coast. I am part of the Leeward Housing Coalition. I'm interested in knowing what information can be given to our Kupuna, to the average person in this community, to the ones who don't have roots to Makua, but we are Koko. That's what I'm interested in. Um, I would like to see in the future if the military can start to tell us, I'm not interested in your guys' plans, the EIS, all of that, I'm sorry. Um, I'm interested in the cleanup plans. Yeah. I wanna know how long it's gonna take, what you guys need from us, how can we hold you guys accountable? If you guys tell us in 2029, power the lease, you guys can clean up, how long is it gonna take? Who is it gonna affect? I'm 33 years old, my daughter is here. I just got off work. I gotta go work tomorrow. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So I would love for in the future to know about your guys' plans, just as a regular community person, just as a regular Hawaiian. I, I don't have roots here, but I am part of the community. I oppose your guys' lease renewal. Mahalo. Mahalo Noi, thank you very much. 151. Thank you for waiting. Aloha mai kako. My name is Terry. Ke ala ona 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 pua. Kia savaina ea. I've lived in Wa'anae for 26 years. I hem on my slippers. I took off my slippers because I am grounded in this community even though I wasn't born in this community because my grandfather was born and raised in Nanakui. I firmly and adamantly opposed to the military keep occupying. 2029 will come, 2029 you'll be gone. And that's what we ask 
of you folks. No more desecration, it has to end. Our people need heat. Sorry, I just feel the energy from the ground and it's really in immense. And I just want this to end so our people can feel. My dad was, my dad was drafted into the war and he came back a broken man. He became an alcoholic. He beat my mom. And then my uncle was a Vietnam and Korean vet, a 23 year Marine. He came back and he died painfully with metastatic breast cancer, a man having metastatic breast cancer because of the Agent Orange. I served in the United States Navy and I was torn between the two worlds and coming up here to speak. But I have to speak on behalf of my people because the pain has to end and it has to end in 2029. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. 152. Thank you for waiting. Mahalo for allowing us to speak. Um, I actually wrote a written testimony and I want to say mahalo, um, Colonel, for being here in this space. Um, and thank you for the leadership meeting that you held with, with leaders of the community and of our legislators. Uh, we didn't have representation from our own MOKU on either level at that meeting, but I did appreciate that you allowed me to invite Uncle William Isla to the meeting because he got to shed a lot of the Ike and Manao of the area and the space. And he, he reiterated a lot of it tonight. And two things that I want to point out clearly on, and, and so the people understand and realize also that with the EIS, like he said, it is, it is flawed. And also he brought up the Chevron deference, um, which is a statement to say that the lease cannot be renewed unless it's by the people. And tonight you've heard every single person that took this mic, and I'm sure in the comment box is going to expect the same, the same echoing of please do not renew that lease. And if it is renewed, it, it's, it's really not a binding document because according to the laws that is currently in place, we don't need legislation to introduce something for this lease to continue or to stop um, the use of Makua. That is not needed. It's already written in the laws and the documents that's before us. And so being that those documents is the signed contracts, it needs to end in 2029. So just re-emphasizing that um, and just please, like I said um, a few months ago, um, allow this opportunity for community and I knew two hours wasn't gonna be enough and that's actually my written testimony and we're two hours over the time but I appreciate you guys for allowing us that extended time. Uh, but please don't let this be uh, formality. Please take our words and our, our brokenness back to the leaders to say there is no more renewal because you guys then will be a violation of laws that are currently in place and contracts that are currently signed. So please take that back and know that there is no renewal in 2029. Mahalo. And then Manny, your last, 154. 153? We are a military family, so I'm just like, this is like how they were saying that this is like, you're teetering on both sides kind of thing, but only one of you guys I know has like military perspective. I work with that brand, so I know, and I make clothes, and I also make the ointments for the kupuna that are on Malakia. So I'm just like, we all know that you don't have jurisdiction for the land because it's crown land, and that belongs to Kawikiuli on Friday. They have um, Kalihu Akuru, who is doing, um, you're all welcome to, invite, to come to LCC and why not? I'm 44 years old and my brother is an army vet. So we didn't pray through Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan for all my brothers and my nephews in different branches. 
for them to come home and be like left alone on the streets and have to like you got agent orange pesticides in the excavator the tongan that's up here that's digging on our valley makaha and wine valley and burning but he is like claiming imminent domain by why not with an AR-15 and I already killed somebody. So I'm like, we have to deal with that and desecration of our land. This mountain right here is training grounds for the Ali. And Makaha, actually all of Oahu is under Kauikeuli and Loa, who we go up to. So I can go to Aotearoa, Samoa, Hawaii and back with genealogy to the 500 AD. So this is very fun for me. And at Pearl Harbor especially is Hupa land, which is my grandmother, with Samoan and Maori and Hawaiian from Yale Valley, which is sacred also, that's all the So the same person that was burning in Maui is also doing last up here. So Pearl Harbor is Kuleana land, that's 52 acres for our family. So once we claim it, that becomes solidified as an affidavit, and then you can go to court and then you have to pay us for your lease. So that's always fun. But I really hope that you listen to all the kupunas and everybody that was talking from the, because we're like mild compared to Kahuku, which is my life, <laughs> like, which is really, there is like, we all stood, all of us have stood for five years even before COVID to protect the Aina. So like any other desecration, you have all of us and more behind us because uh -huh. we all film it on all platforms. So I hope you can consider everybody's, um, you know, information. Mahalo. Thank you very much. 154, Manny Kula Loyal. Last but absolutely not least by any stretch of the imagination. Today. Can you help my sister? Hello again. This is the same meeting, Kihau, where we were up in Lelehua, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. During COVID. Yep. Right? That's the one. He had like 47 HPD officers. Uh, I was there. They got canceled because of Delta. Anti Lynette Cruz, <laughs> Kyle Kajihiro, Uncle Sparky. Who else was there, Kyle? Yeah, planning guys. What was the reason got canceled, by the way? Delta. What is Delta? That was the COVID. Before. COVID Delta. Okay, yeah. so we had the Zoom after, right? Okay. So I read, Mr. Overton, G70. I read all your binders. I thank all your staff for staying. Every one of them. Okay, how? Thank you for extending this beyond 8 o'clock. Of course. Because that's what's deserved. Yes, absolutely. So, Colonel, I'm the son of a U.S. Army cryptologist that proudly served. When he went to Georgia, he went into the white bathroom, whites only, and they said, boy, get out of this bathroom. So my dad went to the colored bathroom and they said, boy, get out of this bathroom. But he was very proud to serve and a proud Hawaiian. And when he passed, I gave him full military honors for the United States Army, overlooking our property in McKenna Bay, looking across three miles to Molokini, and the fort to Kahoolawe Island, where my dad was asked by the Prate Kahoolawe Ohana at the disappearance or murder of George and Kimo Mitchell, George Helm and Kimo Mitchell, to run water safety. So I was trained, sir, by guys from Greenpeace. I look like a monk seal now, <laughs> but I lived with a Navy seal called John Kelly. And when he died, I gave him full military honors with a helicopter from Maui above and below. I'm here, Kihau, because you're here. I'm here, Colonel, because as a young man, I remember
They call him Poka Lainui. I knew him as Uncle Hayden Burgess. I knew the wife as Auntie Pua. Uncle Olave. I'm the youngest guy in the PKO that knows this story. And I remember Uncle Fred Dodge would come to my grandma's house. I remember sitting on the pool lily with Mr. Isla. And I've always come. I never knew what the PKO took a position, but I came anyway. And I remember sitting on the right side of Yuki Hall, and Mr. Isla was on your left in Nanakuli. Remember? And I promised I would never go to Makua until the place got returned to Mr. Isla. And it's similar to when I was asked to go to the island of Vieques on behalf of Dr. Emmett Aluli. But he know I told him don't go. So I went. And when I saw the fishermen like Carlos Zinon and Ishmael Guadalupe across the gates in Vieques, holding, yes sir, yeah, protesting with the riot police, men and women from the governor. You know what the United States Navy did? They hadn't bombed for a long time. But they sent these battleships by the bioluminescent base, sir. You know what I'm talking about, eh? And at exactly 10.10, 10, they went, boom, 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 boom. Just like saying, Mr. Manuel WMD Kululoyo from Honua Ula Maui, welcome to Puerto Rico. I am the most powerful force in the world. What you gonna do? My life has never been the same, Kehau. And that's why I came tonight. Sir, I was on runway two for the USS President landed at 11-11 on Maui. You go back and tell the National Security Advisor, Mr. Austin, SecDef, that man, he said, give back my core. Because you know why, sir? Not only is it the right thing to do, that's the army that I know. Brother, Smedley Butler, War is a Racket. Mm -hmm. That's the book given to me by John Kelly, who helped recover war shot torpedoes with Admirals Momsen and Lockwood off Kalalavi Island. What an irony, Kel. Have I ever told you that story? I don't know, maybe. But I'm telling you, sir, it's because of the humanity in you. It's the right thing to do. And you know why, Kehal? Why? When I went to live with Mary and Kelly and Uncle John, you know what the first thing Auntie Mary and Kelly did to me? She says, come sit in my rocking chair. And she went to her, my, the house is full of books, by the way. Mm -hmm. I read every book, from Ludwig von Mises, Socialism to Das Kapital. She pulled it up and she said, Manny, I want you to read this. And you know what it was? It was, it was about the expropriation of all the families from Makua Valley. Mm -hmm. She was an anthropologist, right? Yeah, she was. I read them. So when I hear all these names tonight, I have no choice, Mr. Island, but to come and testify. Mahalo. It's the right thing to do. Mahalo. And you know why? I cannot imagine my two children living with palms on the opposite side of the that, that should never happen. And sir, kindly in my heart, I came tonight because the president stopped the bombing of Kaolave on my birthday, October 22nd. We know how to do it. There's a way, sir, okay? Uh -huh. And you know why, Kehau? Why? Because, because if Josh Green is still the governor, he will have a play. And if anti Don Chang is still the DLNR chairman, like how you were, Mr. Ayla, they will both have a play. And I'm not gonna make it easy on them either. So don't feel like it's all on you, okay? But if you do your part, we do our part, right? Okay, Ken, Hiki. Sir, thank you.
Mahalo Marie. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, you didn't even get first. So if we could just, Uncle Bill, Chair Ayla, can you close, like, so we all get home in one piece? It was a heavy night tonight, so we ask for Ike, knowledge. We ask that we all have the skills necessary to fulfill all of our wants and desires that we came here tonight for. We ask for the strength. The strength to look around the room, to occasionally disagree and agree with each other. But most of all, that word that you heard over and over and over tonight, that we do all of this with aloha. Amen. Everybody be safe going home. Thank you very much for your time and your patience. Just to be here. Eo Waina.
You claim you need Makua in the name of national defense for wars that you started. You claim to know Aloha Aina, but all you know is desecration and genocide. Yo. I revoke my U.S. citizenship because where will you deport me when you are the one who do not belong here? Yo. Let the record show that I cannot wait until America is held accountable for all the war crimes and human rights violations inflicted upon my people and country, the Hawaiian Kingdom. He hey, hobaiao mao mao. Eolo mao keo puni hobai eo.